Xia Yuzhang unexpectedly returned to the Republic of China and collided with a pair of male and female Japanese spies in the wilderness. The Japanese spies became angry with embarrassment and mixed doubles, wanting to kill him and silence him. Xia Yuzhen, a great young man from the 21st century, used his desperate power in panic to smash the male spy dog head and bundle and sell the female spy. Just as he was gaining the upper hand, Xia Yuzheng surprisingly chose Tao Jia what exactly happened. Let the charming exotic flower and the top secret agent king pursue him like a maggot with bones. How did Xia Yuzheng unleash his potential through a series of thrilling experiences, turning defeat into victory time and time again, traveling from the wilderness to the city, transforming from a rookie to a spy, and climbing from the grassroots to the pinnacle of his life? For more information, please refer to Qian Feng. QQ Group 79736981 Keywords of the Novel Qianfeng No Pop-Ups, Qianfeng TXT Complete Collection Download, Qianfeng Latest Chapter Reading Chapter 1 Spy You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Spy The Stretching Luoshao Mountain Stretches Majestically Across the Vast Land from a distance, amidst the swirling clouds and mist, thousands of peaks and waves surge and gather, like a surging sea. When viewed up close, its magnificent scenery resembles a picture book in the painter's pen. However, when viewed up close, one can see the mountains and rivers varying in height, the steep cliffs far and near, and the misty mist in the eyes, resembling a fairyland. Suddenly, a gust of wind blew, lifting a corner of the clouds and mist, revealing the scorching summer sun like fire, illuminating a steep mountain. On the mountain ridge, there are dense pine and cypress trees, and a winding path meanders through it. At this moment, on this winding path, a young man was walking far away. The young man was wearing a white shirt and black pants. As he approached, it was evident that he had a handsome face and a capable figure. He looked like he was only twenty years old. Now, as he walked, he looked around and occasionally looked at the phone in his hand, muttering to himself, Where exactly did you, Mr. Xia Yuzhen, get fooled? Why hasn't there been any signal? As he was about to climb the high mountain, Xia Yuzhen turned around and muttered, This place is spacious all around. It would be quite appropriate to build a radio base station. Xia Yuzhen is a student in school with average academic performance. He likes to stay in his dormitories, chat online, read espionage articles, and sometimes browse military forums to pretend to be a military fan. Just now, he was discussing espionage articles with someone when suddenly an ID of Nongbin Beauty popped up and said to him, You can do it, you can do it. Xia Yuzhen wouldn't be willing to show weakness. After all, as a keyboard warrior, Juga was not afraid of anyone. He immediately replied, if I were to go up, there would only be time travel, and the time traveler would definitely be better than the protagonist. As soon as the words fell, a large line of text appeared on the computer screen. Are you sure you want to join the secret front of World War II? Xie Yuzheng has been amused, who are you fooling? Don't just brag online, even if it's just playing real, I'm not afraid of you. He didn't hesitate to click on the choking option and then he came to this big mountain. Regret returns to regret. Since you have come to this deep mountain wilderness, you must walk out alive. But it's been more than 10 miles of mountain road, not only haven't a single person touched, but my phone hasn't been connected to the signal to see this rare and remote appearance. Where is this? But don't really travel, right? After walking for half a day, Xia Yuzheng felt a bit anxious and anxious in his heart. As he was looking around, he suddenly heard the sound of a radio broadcast in his ear. He looked around and didn't see a single person. The mountain path was verdant with vegetation on both sides, and the summer sun was like a golden arrow, casting down from above and landing on the path, speckled with spots. After carefully identifying the direction, it was found that the sound came from not far ahead. Xia Yuzhen quickened his pace and walked forward. This is already the highest point of the mountain, and the trees have suddenly become sparse. 
a simple antenna rack was exposed on a shrub branch not far ahead. This antenna rack is made by wrapping wires around tree branches. Now, it is being held high, as if searching for signals. Xia Yuzhen was both surprised and delighted. I didn't expect to encounter radio enthusiasts in this deep mountain wilderness. Without hesitation, take two or three steps at once, take a few quick steps, gently brush away the tips of the grass and trees, and look forward through the bushes. In the field of vision, a man and a woman appeared seven or eight steps ahead. The woman stands and the man sits. The man sitting had a sturdy physique, with a blue cloth scarf wrapped around his head and a short coat on. He was dressed in a simple and honest mountain folk attire. However, now this simple and honest mountain resident has a black earphone hanging on his neck. He was sitting in front of the stone tray with a pursed corner of his mouth, focused on the radio station on the stone. His left hand was holding a letter-like paper, and his right hand was repeatedly pressing a button. Beep 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 the woman standing tall and very stylish, wearing a navy blue Zhongshan suit. Perhaps the heat was unbearable, she rolled up the sleeves of the suit high on her arm, unbuttoned all the buttons, revealing the white shirt inside. At this moment, she was holding the simple antenna in her hand high, cooperating with the broadcast. The sound of ticking was incessant, and several small signal lights on the radio flickered incessantly. TSK TSK, look at this equipment, this outfit, the Republic of China style is full of it, and the gameplay is so professional. It's rare to see Xia Yuzhen himself used to being careless, but he really admires people who are strict and disciplined. At this moment, seeing these two people fully focused, I felt it was inconvenient to rush in and disturb each other. But if you continue to stay here, it's hard to escape the suspicion of peeping. However, he increasingly felt that things were not going well. Perhaps. Maybe. He had really traveled through time. Just as he hesitated, the woman in the Zhongshan suit hesitated for a moment, her gaze suddenly cast over, and she scolded. Who's there? Come out. The voice is soft and pleasant to the ear but the expression is not polite. In this way, Xia Yuzhen couldn't continue to hide. He separated the plants and walked out, waved his hand, and whispered, Hello, I was originally with the group, but I accidentally got separated. Xia Yuzhen thought to himself that the only thing left was to fabricate the idea of a tourist group. Otherwise, it's really difficult to explain the whole story. But as soon as he spoke, he felt a bit inappropriate, but in an instant, he didn't fully understand what was wrong. What group? That woman in Zhongshan attire is about 20.2 or 3 years old, with a beautiful oval face, fair skin, two curved willow eyebrows lightly swept, and a pair of apricot eyes shining sharp light. She doesn't speak Mandarin, but she can understand. Xia Yuzhen also knows that there are many young people in the South who speak Mandarin like this, and he is not interested at the moment. Oh, I'm a tourist from the tour group. May I ask, how can I get to the nearest village from here? Travel Right Regiment. Do you mean, are you from the Travel Right Regiment? The woman in the Zhongshan suit listened to Xia Yuzheng's words and quickly exchanged a glance with the mountain people. Her tall and plump body instantly tightened, and her gaze scanned Xia Yuzheng's body aggressively. Yes, from the tour group. Xia Yuzheng noticed a difference in their expressions before him, with a hint of murderous intent. He gave them a strange glance, thinking that he had not offended them in his words. How could they react in this way? The unease in his brain grew stronger and stronger, and he unconsciously took two steps away while quickly scanning the surroundings. The mountain breeze enters my arms, especially cool. This is the highest point of the mountain, with much sparser trees. Looking around, besides the towering mountains, there were also towering mountains that stretched all the way to the end of the sky, as if they could never reach the edge. After walking alone in the mountains for so long, Xia Yuzheng's lips and tongue were already dry, and he paused for a moment, feeling as if his legs were filled with lead. 
Faced with the vast mountains, his heart was once again filled with a sense of powerlessness. In such a situation, I met this pair of men and women with an unpleasant expression in front of me. Well, since they are playing radio in this place, it shows that it is convenient to send and receive signals. Let's take a look at their phones again. Thinking of this, he quickly checked his phone and saw that the signal on the screen was zero, and the battery level was only 5% left. Subconsciously, he turned in place for half a turn, but the signal remained unchanged, still zero. In the screensaver of a mobile phone, there is the back of a young man. This is a man in a hat and windbreaker, carrying two rifles, walking towards an old iron bridge. On the head of the iron bridge, there is a sandbag fortification prominently erected. Behind the fortification, two Japanese soldiers, wielding a machine gun, are eyeing the incoming people. This is a photo of Xia Yuzheng participating in a character audition for a spy film, specifically taking a bloody battle on the Shanghai beach. Sha Sha Sha. Seven or eight steps away, the rustling of grass leaves made a sound. Xia Yuzheng turned his head and glanced over, only to see that in the blink of an eye, the mountain people who were reporting had already taken off their headphones and walked towards him. The mountain people have a sturdy physique, but their footsteps are very agile, like a cheetah. What is this? Surprised, Xia Yuzheng's heart became alert and his gaze swept towards the woman in Zhongshan attire. He saw that the antenna in her hand was also leaning against the tree, and her long legs seemed ready to move towards him. The two of them formed a faint encirclement of Xia Yuzheng. Xia Yuzheng felt a loud bang in his forehead and a shock on his back. He quickly put his phone in his pocket, and a sudden and inexplicable potential threat made him instinctively want to quickly run away. At this moment, the gazes of the mountain people followed their phones and landed on Xia Yuzheng's pocket. The mountain resident's eyes lit up immediately, his footsteps slowed down, and a simple smile appeared on his face. He then heard him ask loudly, Brother, are you lost? As he spoke, he bent down and picked up a shoulder bag from the grass. That action was very natural, as if he had just planned to come and pick up this shoulder bag. Xia Yuzheng noticed that this person had clear eyebrows and beautiful eyes, white and neat teeth, and a somewhat innocent smile, but could not conceal the bright sunshine. No wonder this mountain itself is an incredibly large natural oxygen bar, filled with sweet and pure mountain spring water everywhere. One land nurtures another people. Yes, may I ask you too, what year and solar term is it now? Xia Yuzheng sneered and saw the woman in Zhongshan clothing also bend down and start tidying up the wires. The navy blue Zhongshan suit was slightly spacious, but it still couldn't conceal her graceful figure. With her every move and gesture, she exudes youthful energy and feminine charm. In the blink of an eye, the atmosphere at the scene tended to ease, and the two of them in front of them looked harmless, causing Xia Yuzheng, who was both physically and mentally exhausted, to be startled. Suddenly startled, Xia Yuzheng's gaze crossed the nearby treetops and caught a glimpse of a row of wooden houses at the foot of the mountain several miles away. There seemed to be a few figures swaying around the wooden house. Finally seeing the village family, Xia Yuzheng breathed a sigh of relief and couldn't help but smile, I was planning to ask the two of you for directions, but I see you are also quite busy, so don't disturb me. Goodbye. The two people in front of me, inside and outside, exude a sense of the first half of the 20th century. Based solely on intuition, Xia Yuzheng felt that the two people in front of him were not simple. If it were during the Republic of China era, those who could afford to play with radio were not ordinary people, let alone a man and a woman, both of whom were physically capable and had a strong temperament. Just now, they looked like they were facing a great enemy. I remembered during the Republic of China era, warlords fought in chaos, and the two in front of me were probably reconnaissance soldiers from a certain warlord, right? Unable to understand, Xia Yuzheng simply stopped thinking and snorted in his heart. No matter what your source is, fortunately there are villages and households not far ahead. You are on guard against your grandfather, he can't trust you. Let's face the sky on the main road and walk on each side. 
Xia Yuzhen quickly restrained his mind and stared at the two people in front of him with caution, while moving his legs and starting to retreat towards the nearby mountain path. Hey, brother, please take a step back. The beautiful mountain resident made a gesture of persuasion when he saw this. My companion is a bit alarmed, please don't take it seriously. I'm afraid my brother has been walking for half a day, so he's already tired. We live at the foot of the mountain not far ahead, you see, it's right there. The person said as he bent over and extended his finger towards the foot of the mountain, see, that wooden house is our residence. Xia Yuzhen was taken aback by the words and thought to himself, I dare you, that's also your territory. This person continued, if you don't mind, why don't you come down the mountain with us, take a break, and take a sharp shot before leaving. The sunlight was a bit dazzling, and the young man dressed by the mountain people in front of me had a very simple face and a very kind tone. Take a look at that beautiful woman in Zhongshan attire, she is retracting the wires on her own. This made Xia Yuzhen start to doubt himself again. The two in front of him seemed like a couple, but they were also considered talented and beautiful, quite a perfect match. Look at them like this now, but humans and animals are harmless. Did you feel too tired walking on the mountain road just now, which made you dizzy and misread? Thinking of this, Xia Yuzhen's expression was somewhat unnatural, still forced to be hypocritical and indirect. Of course that's good, but I'm afraid it might cause too much trouble for both of you. Hee <laughs> hee, what's here? The mountain people had already carried their shoulder bags and turned back to the stone tray, half bowing their bodies and deftly tidying up the radio station. At this moment, after hearing Xia Yuzhen's words, he waved his hand disapprovingly and said, it's better to walk together. The roads in this mountain are complex, and if you accidentally enter the beast path and encounter an evil beast, it won't be easy to escape. Beasts. Xia Yuzhen was taken aback at the words. Judging from the vegetation types in the mountain, it should be the mountains in the south. But these mountains are towering, and I didn't see any wild animals on my journey just now. In fact, due to the imbalance of modern ecological environment, the South China tiger has long been extinct. The overall situation is like this, other small beasts may have a harder time surviving, but where did they come from? Unless he thought of this, Xia Yuzhen let out a sigh and said, Oh my, I don't know what year it is today. What kind of mountain is this? There are actually many wild animals, what kind of animals are they? What year? What animal? Hey, this is the 24th year of the Republic of China. Oh, sir, you must be in a daze, right? Hmm, you don't even know what kind of wild animals there are in Luoshao Mountain, how dare you walk around alone? Fortunately, if you run into us, if you dive into that tiger, leopard, jackal, and dog's nest, you'll have to fill the stomachs of those animals. The woman in Zhongshan attire joked to Xia Yuzhen while tidying up the antenna. The weather was hot and she had been working hard all along. At that moment, I saw her face blushing and a layer of fine sweat oozing out. Her demeanor and tone were very natural, as if acquaintances were chatting. Her movements were also very skilled, her slender hands quickly intertwined, quickly winding the long wires into a circle and carrying them on her thin shoulders, clearly an experienced radio player. Luo Shao Mountain Ha, in an instant, from Qixia Mountain in 2020 to Luo Shao Mountain in 1935, time flies back for decades, and the distance is thousands of miles away. Today's good fortune, like a thunderbolt, blasted Xia Yuzhen, who was about to collapse, into a state of external focus and internal focus, staring blankly at him. At this moment, the direct sunlight of noon shone on the left jacket pocket of the woman in Zhongshan attire, causing a sudden surge of brilliance. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Tang Hand You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Tang Hand As the woman in the Zhongshan suit shifted her shoulders and turned around, that bit of brilliance disappeared in a flash. But at this moment, she saw more vividly, revealing a shiny pen cap at the edge of her pocket. Xia Yuzhen can only be considered a half-hearted fan of the Republic of China. 
At this moment, he can still recognize it at a glance. It is a Zipak pen, an old style from the first half of the last century. Xie Yuzheng suddenly remembered the sentence on his computer screen before crossing over. Are you sure you want to join the secret front line of World War II? During World War II. Secret front. Xie Yuzheng muttered a few words in his heart, and as he read, his heart skipped a beat. He quickly scanned the two of them, only to realize that there was a rare rigor and meticulousness in their behavior and expressions. This rigorous and meticulous nature shows that they do not seem like ticket enthusiasts or ordinary people, but rather like another ethnic group of Japanese people. Have you really arrived in the Republic of China? Will these two people in front of you really be Japanese? Is it possible that the flames of war have already reached this point? This year is the 24th year of the Republic of China, which is AD 1935. Two Japanese friends, Hihi, -hi, came to the deep mountains in southern China. What are they doing? Well, they only have two people, and it doesn't seem like they're the elite scouts going forward. Is it a spy who infiltrated early to draw a map of the mountains and rivers? Previously, Xie Yuzheng learned from the memoirs of some famous figures in the Republic of China that it was not until the outbreak of the anti-Japanese war that the Chinese people were surprised to find that the maps drawn by the Japanese were much more accurate and detailed than those drawn by our own country. Xie Yuzheng also read a declassified plan of the Japanese invasion of China. In this plan, the geography, customs and traditions of various regions in China, as well as many deep underground mineral resources, are all listed in detail. On weekdays, Japanese people send more special agents to infiltrate various parts of China under the pretext of studying, visiting friends, traveling, and providing disaster relief. They steal geographical data of our mountains and rivers, draw maps, survey mineral resources, and even until the 21st century, news of capturing Japanese spies occasionally appears throughout the country. It is heartbreaking that during the Republic of China era, warlords fought fiercely and the people were struggling. The vast country was riddled with holes and leaks everywhere. Japanese and foreign spies come and go freely in China, with unobstructed access. If we look back at this period of Chinese history in the past, Xia Yuzheng often lamented the misfortunes of the Chinese people and angered them for not arguing. But now, when he finds himself in this situation, Xia Yuzheng feels like he can't just take it lightly. Oh, no, he has to call the police thinking of this, Xia Yuzheng was taken aback. No, it wasn't that he was dizzy just now. They were really planning to take action against him. Wait, they were all ready to take action just now, why did they change their faces again? Xia Yuzheng clearly remembers that it was the mountain people who first changed their faces, and what was the reason? A series of questions flashed through Xia Yuzheng's mind, and he quickly made a decision in his heart. He maintained his surface calm and talked confidently. Oh my, I didn't expect it to be so dangerous in this mountain. Fortunately, I ran into two people. Otherwise, I wouldn't have imagined the consequences. At this moment, the woman in Zhongshan attire was bending down to retrieve a canvas bag from the grass. At this moment, she was carrying an electric wire on her shoulder, so her posture was a bit awkward. Her navy blue clothes were tight, and her posture resembled that of yoga with beautiful lines. However, it can be imagined that it was also a bit difficult. Xie Yuzheng had a sudden idea and decided to give it a try. In an instant, his mind flashed with lightning, and he quickly deduced the possible direction of the situation. Well, if they were really Japanese spies, no matter what reason he found, they would never let him leave. If that were really the case, he would have to fight to the death. On the contrary, if one's guess is wrong, then one's probing is risk.free. It's not a disaster, it's a disaster that can't be avoided. Xia Yuzheng glanced at the foot of the mountain again, feeling that things should be done sooner rather than later. The situation is now underway and there is still a little bit of initiative. At least, their radio station is not ready yet, and they are not fully prepared for a comeback. 
Thinking of this, Xia Yuzhen approached the Japanese woman from behind and recited a spell. Is there a big change in salary or salary? This is a Japanese sentence that means. It's really hard work. Let me help you, okay? Thanks to a Japanese drama that he once pursued for a summer vacation, his words are quite authentic. Xia Yuzhen's tone was very natural and friendly, as if he had been caring for an old friend for many years. However, as soon as he uttered these words, he immediately regretted it. Being alone, this deep mountain forest. Impulsiveness is a devil. Sure enough, Xia Yuzhen immediately heard the expected answer, with a soft and pleasant voice that could be heard in his ears, but was particularly heart-wrenching. Aligeda. Vada swore before she could finish a sentence, the woman in Zhongshan attire's pretty face suddenly turned pale, and her mouth choked to death. Xia Yuzheng and the mountain resident exchanged a glance, and both of them were shocked. The white sunshine shines brightly on the eyes. In an instant, the woman in Zhongshan attire moved, and Xia Yuzheng also moved. The two of them almost simultaneously engaged in movements. The woman in Zhongshan attire made a decisive decision, flipped her right wrist, turned around, and a snowy dagger stabbed Xia Yuzheng behind her. The woman in this Zhongshan suit has a tall and plump figure, full of femininity, but her movements are also very ruthless, making people shudder. Ah! Ah ah! Although Xia Yuzheng was well prepared, he was still a rookie otaku. At first, he couldn't help but glance at her twice. At this moment, he was also regretful for his impulsiveness. Suddenly, he saw a snowy dagger stabbing him, which scared him almost to the death and he couldn't help but shout out. His exaggerated volume soared into the sky, startling the woman in Zhongshan attire. In panic, for some reason, Xia Yuzheng reached out both hands at the same time, placing his left hand on the left shoulder of the woman in Zhongshan suit and his right hand on her neck. With both hands gripping onto something, it was like a drowning person grabbing a life.saving straw. Xia Yuzheng had no time to ponder and instinctively tugged fiercely. The woman in Zhongshan attire's attack was heavily dragged and disrupted the rhythm, causing her to lose balance and fall backwards. Fortunately, her reaction was extremely fast. She saw her right hand retract, she exerted a strong spin on her waist, turned her shoulder and back, and threw out the wire loop on her left shoulder. With a whoosh, the wire loop completely fell into Xia Yuzheng's hands. Um. Xia Yuzheng's shout was hard and he looked at the wire loop in his hand dumbfounded. Why do you give me this? I don't need it anymore. I'm worried about how to deal with this wire loop, but the woman in the Zhongshan suit has her hands clasped back and rushed forward with the flow. It was obvious that she wanted to get rid of Xia Yuzheng, who was tightly gripping her collar, by taking off her coat. The overlord sheds his armor, um. The golden cicada sheds its shell. As she saw her navy blue coat quickly peel off, revealing the white shirt inside. Xia Yuzheng suddenly woke up and quickly let go of her collar, letting the whole clothes hang down on her slender arms, entangled with the two sleeves that were already high rolled up. At the same time, he raised the wire loop on his left hand and pulled it straight towards her head and neck. The woman in Zhongshan attire saw the situation and knew it was not good, so she had to step back, give a coquettish scolding, raise her head, and hammer her head hard towards Xia Yuzheng's chest behind her. Master, the enemy in front of him had his arms tied back, his hair as black as clouds, his face facing the sky, and his movements were pleasing to the ear. Xia Yuzheng pulled the coil and quickly retreated to the right. Noticing that the head hammer had fallen into the air, the woman in the Zhongshan suit flipped backwards, her delicate shoulder and back falling to the ground, while raising her left leg loudly, carrying the weight and acceleration of the entire person flipping backwards, and slammed it down on Xia Yuzheng's forehead. At first glance, encountering such a skilled practitioner, Xia Yuzheng, the otaku, certainly didn't look good enough. How could a young person with a heart full of pride be willing to just be beaten and not fight back? Speak late, speak quickly now. 
Xia Yuzhen dodged to the right and saw a black shadow hitting above his forehead. Without hesitation, he raised a wire loop and put it on the side. This set is very practical. Oi! Xia Yuzhen was both happy and surprised, and couldn't help but draw a line in his heart. He was delighted that at this critical moment, not only did he avoid attacks one after another, but he was also able to successfully counterattack. The contempt and ridicule towards military residences in later generations can be washed away and put to sleep. It should be noted that military fanaticism is not fanaticism, it is sharp thinking, although otaku is a otaku, he learns very quickly. He was surprised to find that he had actually traveled to the Republic of China, and the opening was so dangerous. Shouldn't I not be able to survive a single episode? Now, he can be considered as trapping this wild and beautiful woman, but this is a dangerous mother leopard. If you're not careful, she can tear you to the point of blood. Excitement and panic intertwined, and suddenly, Xia Yuzheng bounced and shouted again, dragging the woman in Zhongshan's suit and spinning around. Suddenly, in the corner of his eye, he caught a glimpse of the mountain people rushing towards him from a few steps away. He was so scared that he threw himself forward again, using both hands and feet, desperately pulling the wire ring towards the neck of the woman in Zhongshan attire. Although the woman in Zhongshan attire has good skills, she has already lost the opportunity and her arms are now bound by her own coat. At this moment, Xia Yuzhen was at a critical juncture of life and death, already panicked. In the midst of the fight, there was no need to show any mercy towards the beautiful Japanese woman, and his feet couldn't help but stomp and stomp on her face. Such a rough and ruthless attack on flowers made this Japanese woman feel both painful and embarrassed, angry and resentful. Her chest was filled with anger and murderous intent, but she found it difficult to use her killing power and techniques. In the blink of an eye, the wire loop, along with her long leg, wrapped around her neck. The poor woman in Zhongshan attire was trapped in a cocoon, and it was precisely her meticulousness and rigor that led to the neat and secure wiring. At this moment, she could barely hold on to her neck and legs, making it difficult to accommodate anything else. Her arms were cut back behind her, entwined with her own coat. Now, with messy sideburns and disheveled clothes, she was so embarrassed and angry that even her neck turned red, like a crab tied up for sale. Although still struggling, it is difficult to break free in a short period of time. Xia Yuzheng didn't have time to appreciate his masterpiece, and the nearby mountain people had already come forward to bully him. I don't know how he moved, but Xia Yuzheng felt a daze in front of him, and his whole body was hit into the air, falling a few steps away. He fell so hard that stars appeared in his eyes and he felt pain all over. Without waiting for him to come to his senses, the figure of the mountain people swept towards him again, and he instinctively rolled, narrowly avoiding it. This is a master who can't do it at all. So, what should we do now? By the way, we need to run away quickly. Xia Yuzheng was both shocked and painful. It's not suitable to stay here for a long time, and his movements cannot be stopped. So, regardless of whether it's useful or not, he rolled two or three times until his body hit a canvas bag before stopping. Speaking of which, it was also luck. Under such circumstances, he successfully avoided the two subsequent attacks of the mountain people, which surprised the attackers quite a bit. This guy has two moves. Despite being heavily attacked and injured, he was able to avoid the continuous attacks of the high dot level Tang Hand. At this moment, Xia Yuzhen was half propped up, gritting his teeth to endure the pain, while raising his hand and groaning for mercy. Wait a minute. I have something to say. What do you have to say? Speak up. The mountain people suppressed their anger and shouted softly. This mountain resident's real name is Jiro Nakamura, a Hokkaido native. On the surface, he is a university assistant, but secretly he belongs to the special high school of the army department. He came to the mountains of southern China more than half a year ago, following his teacher Mr. Fujiwara and his team, at the invitation of a Chinese classmate, under the name of a joint mine. Today, 
He brought his assistant Sadako to this mountain and sent several telegrams, one related to mining operations, and the other containing top-secret information on the terrain, topography, and distribution of mineral resources in several surrounding counties and cities. Unexpectedly, Xia Yuzheng, who intruded rashly, almost caused him to interrupt his message. This has never happened before in his career. In order to eliminate risks and prevent future troubles, Nakamura began with the idea of killing people and silencing their mouths. Only when he saw the novel object in Xia Yuzheng's hand later did he quickly change his mind and plan to take Xia Yuzheng back to his residence for interrogation before silencing him. Who would have thought this young man, who looked gentle and studious, would be such a cunning guy? Firstly, he pretended to be foolish and ignorant, forgetting even when and where he was. However, in a blink of an eye, he casually uttered a sentence, deceiving the identities of the two Japanese people. When did the pig-like people and learn to speak Japanese when they met anyone in the ravine? As he watched Xia Yuzhen dodge his attacks, Nakamura felt that the face of the imperial elite was almost lost to him. His desire to kill and silence him grew stronger. However, this guy's object is really novel, there is actually a colorful photo on the glass mirror. Nakamura has received professional training and has a much sharper observation ability than ordinary people. After scanning two eyes, he discovered abnormalities. You should know that in this era, most photos are black and white, and movies are also mostly black and white. Even in scientifically advanced and technologically advanced European and American countries, the mainstream filming is still black and white images. When did you have such a sophisticated color camera? Of course, what shocked Nakamura the most was the scene on the camera. To be precise, it's the man holding two guns and the iron bridge in that scene. Because of that iron bridge, Nakamura knows each other. Only six or seven months ago, they also walked across this iron bridge, which is the Garden Bridge of Shanghai on the Suzhou River on the Bund of Shanghai. This bridge is one of the iconic buildings of this far eastern metropolis. At the head of Waibedu Bridge in this photo, a sandbag fortification was built. Behind the fortification, two Japanese soldiers were holding a machine gun and staring at the visitors. Nakamura just glanced at it and his heart trembled uncontrollably. What's going on? Has the empire already taken action? How come my group didn't receive any news? Nakamura stared coldly at Xia Yuzhen, who was struggling to get up a few steps away, and said to himself, judging from his skill, the guy in front of him could not be an agent of. How could he be such a clumsy agent? But just now he was holding the machine, spinning and muttering, talking about signals and other nonsense. This indicates that the machine in his hand can not only take photos, but also seem to be able to connect with the outside world. Is it actually a combination of a miniature camera and a radio station? As Nakamura thought, he reached out and plucked off a dead branch that had been stuck to his headscarf at some point. This, this is simply unbelievable. Could it be that, which is extremely backward in industrial technology, has produced any new inventions and technologies? No, we must catch this man alive and dig out everything related to this from his mouth. Nakamura secretly made up his mind. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Wu Yun You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Wu Yun Hey, I said, we have no grudges or grudges, it's just a chance encounter. I don't care at all about who you are, where you come from, or what you're doing. I think we should go our separate ways instead of letting the water flow into the well. Xia Yuzhen, who was seven or eight steps away, had just climbed up, panting heavily and feeling indignant. The current situation clearly cannot be improved. However, now Xia Yuzhen is suffering from severe pain all over his body, and he even has some difficulty breathing. He must try his best to buy some time and slow down. Do you want to leave? Sure. But you have to come back with us first and talk to us about some things. Nakamura saw that the other party had been severely injured, so he relaxed his neck. If you have anything to say, it's the same to ask here. 
I will definitely know everything and say everything. Xia Yuzheng moved his neck and twisted his body, revealing his teeth and gasping for breath. You. Nakamura's eyes widened as he was about to erupt, but on second thought, he didn't mind. He smiled and said, it's not impossible to ask questions here. But you have to answer well. I ask you, what machine was it in your hand just now? Is that what you're talking about? Xia Yuzhen tugged at the corner of his mouth and took out his phone. This thing is called a claw machine. Yoshi, so it's a claw machine. Can you lend me a look? Nakamura's eyes lit up as he saw the machine again. Nima, I really have a crush on this phone. On the ground not far away, the woman in Zhongshan attire was rolling on the ground like a crab, rolling towards the mountain people across from her. Xia Yuzhen let out a sigh in his heart. He couldn't drag on any longer. If he dragged on any longer, there would be fewer people bullying more people. The male and female thieves in front of him would kill without blinking an eye. He put away his phone and said loudly. That's not possible. Anyone can borrow this claw machine, but unfortunately I can't borrow it from you. Because you look too creepy and make people uncomfortable looking at you. You. Nakamura choked on Xia Yuzhen's words, and after a while, he finally exhaled a mouthful of turbid air, gritting his teeth and muttering, it seems that you are not planning to cooperate well, so let's see the truth in our hands. If you win, go wherever you like. If you lose, please come back with me. Maybe we can have a pleasant cooperation. After speaking, his gaze playfully scanned Xia Yuzhen across from him, as if he was looking at a prey that had fallen into a trap. A hint of grimace slowly appeared on the corner of his mouth. Do you want to fight? I'll be with you. Xia Yuzheng sneered as he raised his chin. However, you are martial arts masters, and I am a beginner in martial arts. I'll fight two against one. Hee <laughs> hee, this goes against the spirit of Japanese Bushido. Do you want to be one dot on point one? Yoshi. I promise you. This time, you'll take action first, come on. Nakamura adjusted his breathing well. He is quite confident in his skills after a ten-point drop. Just like a cat teasing a mouse, being able to play with a cunning and arrogant guy with one's own hands can be very interesting, isn't it? At this moment, a strong mountain wind swept over the hill, stirring the surrounding trees and making a rustling sound. The bushes around fluctuated like a lake, and the opposing sides remained silent like a reef standing in the center of the lake. I have done everything I need to do. Whether I can survive this first episode depends on my character and fate. Seeing the Japanese person across from him open their stance, Xia Yuzheng had to grit his teeth, endure the pain, slowly spread his arms, and spread out his wings like a big pang. Then, he lifted his right leg again and stood on his own. However, his lifted leg was tilted backwards, and his head and neck were also extended forward at the same time. The entire structure looks like a model airplane standing on a bracket. However, the hoe-shaped tail wing did not curl up, but rather drooped, shining with a pitch-black light in the noon sunlight. In this battle, the martial arts master on the opposite side, Mr. Nakamura, was stunned and asked, which sect or school starting style is this? Have you never heard of it? In his early years of learning Tang handicrafts, Nakamura heard from his teacher that China is vast and rich in resources, with hidden dragons and tigers everywhere. Although it has declined in modern times, it should not be underestimated. The traditional martial arts skills of Chinese folk have always been said to have southern fists and northern legs. From the previous confrontation, it seems that this person is clumsy and disorganized. But unfortunately, it was his chaotic movements that successfully trapped Sadako under his own nose, using the existing circle of wires on site. You should know that although Sadako is a woman, she is not considered mediocre among the few companions. Nakamura thought of this and glanced at Sadako, who was tied up like a crab next to her. She had rolled into a dirty ball of mud and grass, with disheveled hair covered in dense leaf shavings and grass stems. 
Her clothes were hard to distinguish between Zhongshan's suit and white shirt but she did not dare to stop. She could only change her position repeatedly by rolling to avoid the relentless attack that might come at any time. Nakamura sighed. Junzi Sauce has always been conceited about her own skills, and never gave up in front of men. This time, only one round, she fell into the hands of this unknown people. Now, will she want to cut her belly and avenge the humiliation like the traditional samurai? At this moment, Xia Yuzhen across from him suddenly let out a roaring roar, and Nakamura suddenly realized that he was imitating the sound of a plane taking off. This village is a bit speechless, it's simply the contempt of the red fruit fruit. He really wants to rush over immediately and beat this bold guy hard. He wants to tell him through practical actions that no one has ever been able to take a high dot level tang hand so lightly, never before. Because almost all those who dare to do so have died. However, the usually cautious Nakamura always felt that something was wrong and that things could not be so simple. He slowly moved his steps and his gaze suddenly fell on Xia Yuzhen, where there was a pile of bulging grass leaves. Nakamura was taken aback. Although the forest was covered with dead branches and fallen leaves, he could be certain that the ground just now did not rise. This cunning guy, deliberately putting on this childish demeanor, actually wants to provoke me. If you rush over without any defense in a fit of anger, you have fallen into his trap. After reading, he had already set up his posture, and his right foot, which was flat behind him, would quickly scoop up the mud, dust, and leaf debris like a kuju at a critical moment, fiercely shooting at the opponent's head, face, and eyes. This kind of martial arts trick has made Nakamura, a samurai, despise it, but as an intelligence officer, he often has to compromise on it. There is a saying in the intelligence community. On the secret front, completing tasks is the most important thing, and you should never be confined to form and process. The person in front of me is an opponent that cannot be underestimated. Nakamura became even more convinced that his team had fallen into the sight of Chinese intelligence agencies. However, although China is generally unified under the name of the nationalist government in Nanjing, in reality, various forces are still acting independently. What faction is this guy in front of me from? Anhui style? Cantonese style? Or in Nanjing? Now, geological surveying and mapping have just begun to take off. How come they were targeted by the intelligence department of? What exactly went wrong? Nakamura, are you okay? At this moment, Sadako's pleasant Nagasaki accent came from the ground. Originally, as Guzi struggled, Sadako saw the two of them stop fighting and caught a glimpse of them facing each other from afar. She couldn't determine who had the upper hand and was very worried, unable to help but call out. Nakamura looked at Sadako like a crab and suddenly came to his senses. He had been delayed for too long. He felt a surge of guilt in his heart and quickly comforted, please be patient, Sadako sauce. After speaking, he quickly rushed towards Xia Yuzheng across from him. As expected, when the two sides were four or five steps away, the aircraft model on the bracket suddenly moved. I saw Xia Yuzheng swinging his arms wide, his upper body quickly rising and leaning back, and his leg, which was flat and tilted back, suddenly kicked towards the pile of dirt in front of him. In the face of a formidable enemy, Xia Yuzheng almost exerted all his strength to nurse. The shiny leather shoes curved in a large arc, kicking grass leaves and soil flying, blocking the sun and splashing directly onto Nakamura's head and face. Nakamura, who had been on guard for a long time, suddenly reached out his hands, blocked the head, and quickly closed his eyes. His movements were extremely swift, with mud and broken leaves suddenly splashing all over his head and face, but not a single bit splashing into his eyes. Just dust and sticky surface, scattered leaves covering the sky. In order to prevent mud, dust, and leaf debris from entering the eyes, Nakamura didn't dare to open his eyes for a moment. However, his speed of attack had no effect, and his figure did not stop at all. He wanted to pass through this harmless barrier and bravely knock down his opponent. However, at this moment, Nakamura, who had a keen hearing, 
suddenly sensed something unusual. Amidst the fluttering withered branches and fallen leaves, there was an extremely domineering wind that was coming from behind. This trend is coming very rapidly. As a high dot level tang hand, Nakamura only had a chance to open a narrow slit in his eyes when he saw a dark shadow fiercely hitting his forehead. At the moment of contact, Nakamura knew by touch that it was a canvas shoulder bag carried by Sadako during her outdoor work. It contained iron tools such as hammers and pickaxes, with a total weight of about 11 or 12 kilograms. Kala A loud noise covered the sky, and Nakamura felt a huge electric light burst in front of him, completely engulfing himself in an instant. The intense pain made Nakamura feel that his skull had completely burst into fragments of varying sizes. He didn't even have time to let out a scream, so his eyes turned black and his legs softened, and he knelt down on the ground. At the moment when he was about to fall, there was a hint of awakening in his mind reminding him not to faint at this critical moment. So he howled bitterly. On the one hand, he wanted to use this scream to alleviate the excruciating pain, and on the other hand, he also warned himself to stay awake no matter what. At the same time, with his last bit of strength, he pulled out the southern 14th moves at his waist and pulled the trigger repeatedly toward several places where the people might stand. The sound of gunfire echoed through the mountains. Nakamura did not hear the sound of people being shot and falling to the ground. With years of career experience, Nakamura also knows that in this situation, it is difficult for him to hit the target. However, it is now extremely critical. A little carelessness, not only himself and Zhen Zi will be buried on the mountain in this foreign country, but also the accompanying radio station and the information just sent, as well as his own party, will be completely exposed to the intelligence department in. How dare he relax his tense mind? Nakamura endured the excruciating pain, hunched his body, and knelt in the midday sunlight. He listened attentively to the surroundings while freeing his trembling left hand, wiping away the sticky liquid that had covered his head and face, and then carefully wiping open the swollen peach like eye blisters. After completing all of this, he quickly resumed holding his gun with both hands, his vigilant gaze piercing through the small crevices of his eyes, guarding from all sides. The field of vision is full of red, even the dazzling sunlight has turned into a shaking red screen. The sky is red with a hint of yellow and white, the mountains are red with a hint of grey and blue, and the surrounding shrubs have turned into blood-scabbed fences. They sway in the mountain wind and emit strange and ferocious laughter, as if the ghost Noah on the Yulon festival is singing wildly. After searching for a long time, Nakamura did not find the despicable man, only glimpsed the ground not far away, and it seemed that Jinzi had broken free from the shackles and was climbing up in disorder. Nakamura could no longer support him, his eyes darkened, and he fell to the ground with a thud. As he fell into a coma, he vaguely heard Sadako's cry. Lord Nakamura, Lord Nakamura. Sadako's voice is very beautiful, as if the nightingale birds in the Shikoku forest are singing. End of this chapter. Chapter 4. Zhuang Ding. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 Zhuang Ding During the drama battle, he was lucky enough to succeed when he suddenly saw Nakamura pull out the southern 14 styles and fire indiscriminately, causing Xia Yuzhen's soul to soar. Seeing that the Japanese woman was about to break free from her constraints and knowing that their lair was not far away, the sound of gunfire was likely to attract his accomplices. The rookie's true colors were exposed, and in panic, he chose to flee in a hurry. Confused and panicked in the mountains, he wandered around until the second half of the night, finally feeling the starlight and turning into a small mountain village, settling down in a deserted temple by the roadside. During his escape, hunger would invade from time to time, but once he waited, he had just sat against the wall in the temple when fatigue took the upper hand, and drowsiness surged like the pine waves on the mountain behind the temple, causing him to faint and fall asleep. Soon, in this small mountain village called Qing Luo village, there was a lonely crowing of chickens and a wisp of cooking smoke. The sun in the east has already revealed a small half of its face on the ridge. The milky white dense fog still flows slowly like a river, 
casting a hazy veil over the houses in the village, the hedges along the road, and the peaks around the village. Today is a good day for Qing Luo village, and the irrigation canal led by Mr. Chen, Qing Luo Canal, is about to be excavated. Before and after breakfast, people gathered around the canal to watch the excitement. Bao Chang Wang Jiagui happily put on the double-breasted bat silk shirt and a melon skin hat, carefully tucking in the short spear at his waist. With a habitual slap, he patted the handle of the spear. In no time, he tidied up, straightened his chest and belly, calmly took a eight-character walk, and left the house. At this moment, the figure of Pippi Niuer suddenly rushed from behind the fence. Nyo Air er has short hair that is shoulder length, like a clump of scattered grass flying. His thin and weak body is as thin as a bamboo pole. It's really worrying whether he will break off hard from running so fast. Wang Jiagui frowned and scolded with disdain. What are you panicking about, Nyo Air, er, like Lang Sa's dog? When Nyo Air er saw him, his eyes immediately lit up. He slowed down and quickly stopped, panting heavily, Bao Bao, Bao Chang. Happy and joyful. Happy event. Wang Jiagui pouted strangely and scanned Nyo Air er up and down, Hey, I'm talking about Nyo Air. Er. You don't have any fields, no land, and no strength. What does this young master of the Chen family have to do with you when he dug a water channel? Also, that year you stole Widow Lu's belly bag and weren't beaten enough by young Master Chen. Upon hearing this, Nyo Air er quickly glanced left and right. Seeing that there was no one nearby, he quickly pulled on Wang Jiagui's sleeve and whispered, Bao, Bao, and Lao Biao uncle, I've already changed my ways. Don't keep mentioning this old thing. Wang Jiagui earned his sleeves, dusted off his clothes, straightened his waistband, and tucked in the short spear. He patted the handle of the spear and raised his face. Nyo Air, er, let me tell you, you have to be honest. The palm-sized land left by your mother has been abandoned for a long time, which is why your aunt planted it. A few days ago, when you came back to collect firewood, did you turn into that land and pick a lot of vegetables? This, 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 Nyo Air's er face turned blue and white, hesitating for a while. I'm passing by. The gourd planted by Aunt Biao has grown bugs, it's a pity it's broken. Before Nyo Air er finished speaking, there was a crisp snap and he had already been slapped. Is it broken? Wang Jiagui tugged at Nyo Air's er chest, his eyes wide open, and whispered sternly, If it's broken, it's also my melon. If you dare to go there again, don't blame me for selling you to another province and being a bad guy. No, no more. Nyo Air er covered his face and nodded repeatedly. At this moment, with just a popping sound, the clothes on his chest burst open. Wang Jiagui was taken aback and quickly let go of Nyo Air. Er. However, he still had a stern face and a look of hatred. Take a look, take a look. You've been lazy all day, and even a piece of clothing has become old. What good news is there? Nyo Air er released his hand that was covering his face and glanced at Wang Jiagui's brand new silk shirt. He timidly raised a finger and a pleasing smile appeared on his face. In the village, behind the village, and in the land temple by the roadside, another outsider has arrived. Nyo Air's er chest was wide open, revealing his bony chest, which looked like a washboard. His bony chest felt like a paper lantern. Although it is already summer, the early morning wind in the mountain village still carries a hint of coolness. Nyo Erlian sneezed twice. He quickly covered his chest. Seeing Wang Jiagui still frowning in confusion, he bowed and explained in a low voice, Bao, Bao Chang, this outsider is a man. He looks seventeen or eighteen years old. A strong man. Wang Jiagui's eyes lit up and he asked tentatively. Seeing Nyo Air er nodding repeatedly, his eyebrows quickly spread out, and a smile slowly appeared on his meaty face. Okay, Nyo Air, er, don't look like he's as thin as bean sprouts, his brain melon seeds are quite useful. The day before yesterday, Mr. Lu from Shiko Town asked me to find someone to support his brother. In law's forehead. 
One Jiegue patted Nyo Air's shoulder and laughed happily, Nyo Air, it's not a waste of my uncle taking care of you for many years. Whenever there's a good thing, I can still think of your uncle. Ha, ha. Nyo Air also grinned and smiled. Qin Luo village is located at the border of two provinces, with a main road connecting Hunan and Jiangxi behind the village. The Tudi temple is located on the roadside. The temple is very small and can only accommodate five or six people. On weekdays, there is no one to worship, and only during holidays and festivals do villagers come to offer incense. Behind the temple lies the vast mountains, where wild beasts occasionally roam. Over time, under the wind and rain, most of the temple gates have decayed. Usually, except for the bustling caravan, beggars and passers-by dare not stay overnight in the temple. In recent years, the situation has been unstable, with occasional refugees passing through Qin Luo village. The bodyguard Wang Jiegui and Mr. Chen gathered several bird guns, seven or eight spear guns, and formed a bodyguard team. Last month, Wang Jiegui led the Baojia team to catch a fugitive in the temple and sent him to Shiko town, where he replaced Yuan Datu with ten white flower heads. Nyo Er heard the news and hurried away. But it was already late, and everyone had already received the reward. At that time, Wang Jiegui saw Nyo Air rushing over eagerly, so he also gave him twenty large coins, which made him happy for half a month. Last night in the middle of the night, Nyo Air came back from a neighboring village and picked up a chicken. From afar, a figure flashed into the earth temple. He thought he had seen a ghost and was so scared that he took a detour into the village and didn't sleep well all night. This morning when he woke up, he mustered up the courage and quietly went to the back of the temple to peek through the window. He found that the person inside was still there, a young man. He hurriedly rushed to report the news, thinking to himself that his uncle would have to join the Baojia team this time. In no time, Wang Jiegui and Nyo Er took the rope, led the Baojia team, and happily headed towards the back of the village. Two local dogs from an unknown family shook their heads and tails, sandwiched in the queue. In the blink of an eye, when I arrived at the Tudi temple, I saw the temple door tightly closed and occasionally heard two faint snores inside. Wang Jiegui pouted, and the bodyguard fanned out, gently stabbing the door with a spear. But the temple door seems to have been bolted from inside, unable to open even after a few thrusts. The crowd let out a strange moan, as the temple door had no latch, but it was clear that it had been propped up from inside. Looking through the hole in the door leaf, I realized that the stone incense burner inside the temple had been moved to the entrance, blocking both doors tightly. Everyone looked at each other in confusion. The stone incense burner has two ears and three legs, very heavy, weighing at least three to four hundred pounds. This portion cannot be moved without four or five ounces. It can be seen from this that this outsider in the temple has a lot of strength, no wonder he dares to stay overnight in this deserted temple. One Jiegui personally stepped forward and slammed the temple door vigorously, shouting, Open the door, open the door. Open the door quickly. After a while, a young voice rang out inside. Who is it? What do you do? Enter the temple to burn incense. Open the door quickly. The stone incense burner inside rumbled away, and Wang Jiagui stepped back and dodged to the side. With a wave of his hand, three earth guns aimed at the temple door. The temple door creaked open, and everyone was stunned when they saw the person inside. Fake Foreign Devils Qin Luo village is located at the border of Hunan and Jiangxi, and there is also the Chen family young master, a student studying abroad. The people of Qin Luo village have also seen the world. The person in the temple has short hair that is about an inch long, and a pair of bright and lively eyes under thick eyebrows. At the age of only eighteen or nineteen, there was a hint of childishness on his sharp and sharp face. But with calm demeanor and calm expression, the whole person appears particularly capable. He wore a white short-sleeved shirt on his upper body, a suit and pants on his lower body, and a pair of shiny black leather shoes, pedaling on his feet. However, now he has a lot of dirt and grass all over his body, 
looking a bit disheveled. Sharp-eyed Wang Jiagui noticed that this person was wearing a crystal-clear steel shell watch on his wrist. This fake foreign devil was even more stylish than the young master Chen who returned from studying abroad. Everyone looked at each other in confusion. At this moment, the fake foreign devil seemed to have not woken up yet. He rubbed his eyes and spoke in Mandarin. Is it really the Republic of China? Although everyone can understand the general meaning of this official language, they are not very good at speaking it. Only Wang Baochang can speak more fluently. Our village is called Qin Luo Village, and I am the Baochang here. Who are you? What are you doing here? Baochang. The young man inside whispered, wearing a melon skin hat, wearing a double breasted jacket, and adding to his lewd nature. Ha ha. The young man laughed and his voice couldn't help but rise a bit. Hey. Are you the Bao Chang? Nyang Shipi, then your family's Mr. Xia Yuzheng is still the committee leader. Nyo Er jumped out from the side and shouted. Yo ho. You're not very big, so your tone is quite impressive. Standing in front of you is the Wang Bao Chang from Qing Luo village. Since the 18th year of the Republic of China, my uncle has been a Bao Chang. It's been a full six years now. Real gold and silver are as good as fake ones. Everyone knows everything from ten miles to eight villages. He spoke while gently swinging the rope in his hand. Has it been six years? It seems that it was indeed the twenty-fourth year of the Republic of China. In 1935, the temple gate was narrow, and only a few rural villagers, carrying a few spears and earth guns, blocked the temple gate tightly. The person in front of me is as thin as a bamboo pole, speaking rashly. There was some backlighting, making it difficult to see the person's expression clearly, but the rope he was swinging in his hand conveyed a clear signal. Its owner was in excitement. At this moment, tired and hungry Xia Yuzheng cursed inwardly, feeling annoyed. Ma Dan, why is this Republic of China so restless everywhere? Who do you say you are? Are you the chairman? During Xia Yuzheng's contemplation, Wang Jiagui, wearing a melon skin hat, spoke up. Wang Jiagui knew that there was a chairman in Nanjing, who was the largest official in the nationalist government today. However, he was afraid that he would only be in his forties or fifties. The foreign student in front of me, exuding a noble aura, was not shy in the face of long spears and earth spears. It was clear from a glance that his background was definitely not simple. But when it comes to what kind of chairman he is, Wang Jiagui finds it unbelievable that he can't just start serving from his mother's womb, right? Oh, you're the village chief. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry, I didn't sleep well last night and felt a bit confused. My brother is the Nanjing Standing Committee Chairman. The special envoy sent here. In the village filled with smoke from the kitchen, a faint aroma of food drifted in. Xia Yuzhen, who was starving, couldn't help but swallow his saliva. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Joyful Events You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Joyful Events Yesterday, Xia Yuzhen, who was in his dream, was soberly aware that he had traveled to the Shanghai Bund of the Republic of China era. While he was in the midst of extravagance and extravagance, he was suddenly awakened by the group of people in front of him. He was originally very angry, but at this moment, due to the situation, he had to squeeze a smile on his face. Nanjing Sent by the chairman of the standing committee Wang Jiagui glanced suspiciously at Xie Yuzheng. The special envoy, what kind of official is this? Have you never heard of it? Yes, the special envoy. Well, they are sent to inspect the local area, explore the geography of the mountains and rivers, and the public opinion of bandits. What is Jiangxi like now? You know, Wang Baochang. Our group just got bandits in the mountains, and we all got separated. Look, I have this document. Yesterday I met a Japanese man in the mountains, and my life was hanging on the line. Today, I haven't woken up yet, 
and I was being questioned by this group of people with spears and earth guns in front of me. In a fit of anger, Xia Yuzheng suddenly smiled and took out a small folder. He opened it and showed it to everyone on a tour, this is a secret document specially issued by Nanjing, which can prove my identity. He gambled on the low literacy rate and complexity of the Republic of China, coupled with the fact that these rural bumpkins had never seen the world before. Sure enough, seeing him reveal his faction, the expressions of these guys in front of him quickly became solemn. Nyo Air er opened his eyes wide and couldn't recognize the characters, so he automatically skipped and fixed his gaze on the bust on the document. He saw the person in that photo, and it was undoubtedly the young man in front of him. Wang Jiegui could recognize a few words, but some of the characters on this document were written differently from usual, and he could only read them with a vague guess. Chinese asterisk 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 driver's license. The most I dot catching one was the square official seal above, which had characters inside. Before he could carefully recognize it, the document swayed towards others, and Wang Jiegui could only vaguely see that the seal was engraved with the words Nanjing. Now, regarding Xia Yuzheng's self-proclaimed identity as a special envoy, Wang Jiagui has believed it six or seven times and thought to himself. Don't be fooled by their youth, they can't withstand their good fortune. This is just like what is sung in the play. The younger generation of the Qi family in the imperial kingdom got tired of playing in the capital and asked the emperor for an official to go out and play. Along the way, they had to search for some common people's wealth and paste, collude with several good family women, and end up in chaos however, what Wang Jiegui and Niu Er both overlooked was that this photo was actually in color. However, this is no wonder of them, because even Wang Jiegui has never seen a photo before. Without a reference, where could the two discover any abnormalities? The armored team members holding weapons have much simpler thoughts. They were hastily summoned, hoping to do some side business and generate income. Seeing this situation, they knew that this young man was likely unable to catch him, so they all wilted and the weapons in their hands began to tilt. Xia Yuzheng had long noticed that these crooked guns were all uniform black powder earth guns, very old and quite ugly. But this thing, even if it's a bit dirty, can still penetrate a hole when hit on a person. At this moment, he saw Wang Jiagui's thoughtful expression and knew that things were developing in a positive direction. He smiled and imitated the gesture of a prominent figure in his impression, saying, Wang Bao Chang, is the public security in the village doing well? I will report to the county in the higher authorities later, commend and publicize your village's practices, and establish it as a typical model village for preventing and governing bandits. Report Commendation Model village. Wang Jiegui's thinking couldn't keep up, his eyes confused, and his eyebrows furrowed even tighter. At this moment, the village suddenly heard a crackling sound of firecrackers, and for a moment, there was a bustle of people and drums and gongs. Xie Zheng laughed heartily and said, Chief Wang, is there a happy event in your village today? Let's go and take our special envoy to take a look. Ah. Uh, Wang Jiagui was taken aback at the words. At this moment, Xia Yuzheng had already turned to the team members of the Baojia team, arched his hand and smiled, saying, Brothers, thank you for your hard work. This special envoy will also come back to pay tribute and reward you all. After speaking, he lifted his feet and walked out the door, ignoring the several spears and earth guns in front of him. A few members of the Baojia team vaguely learned from the conversation between the two of them what kind of official the young man in front of them was. At this moment, they saw the young official politely expressing their intention to seek credit and rewards for everyone. The more honest one, they rubbed their heads and awkwardly chuckled. With the more clever one, they quickly glanced at Bao Chang Wang Jiegui and saw that he had no intention of blocking him. A group of people saw Xia Yuzheng rushing out and looked at each other, so they had to move their weapons away and make way for a passage. However, the young official in front of him stopped and turned his head to look at Wang Jiagui. Ah, Wang Bao Chang, people feel refreshed and sad when it comes to happy events. What should we do? Let's go and have fun with the villagers together. 
don't be afraid of many good things. Even though Wang Jiagui claimed to be knowledgeable and knowledgeable, he couldn't help feeling a bit confused at this moment. After hearing Xia Yuzhen's words, his mind suddenly came to an idea and he thought to himself. Yes, the person in charge of excavating the canal is the young master of the Chen family, a student studying abroad. In terms of knowledge, who else in the village is stronger than him? What exactly is this guy in front of me? Let's find the young master of the Chen family to see, isn't that enough? Thinking of this, his meaty face lit up with a smile. He took two steps forward and reached out to guide the way, this way, please, Mr. Special Envoy. The sun had already risen high, and Wang Jiagui and his group gathered around Xia Yuzhen, passing through the village and arriving at the bustling Shinto. At this point, the swona, gongs, and drums had already stopped. After presiding over the groundbreaking ceremony, the young master of the Qin family, Qin Qinghua, left his servant, Captain Lu, to supervise the work. He himself, along with a group of local gentry and elders, returned to the Qin family mansion to prepare for a lunchtime banquet to celebrate. On the scene, around a hundred young students were seen waving hoes and axes, sweating profusely on a section of the decadent canal, working vigorously. The elderly and women gathered in groups of three, five, and four, five, and one, discussing one after another. The children were laughing and laughing, running and flying all over the place, feeling very happy. At this moment, a strong young man picked up a large stone and walked briskly up the ditch. A pretty village maid was mesmerized by her pulse, and the middle dot aged woman next to her reached out and shook her hand in front of her, jokingly saying, Li Hua, don't dare to look anymore. If you want to provoke that pillar, you'll get into trouble. The village girl's face lit up with two red clouds, and her neck hung down shyly. A woman next to her curiously asked, His aunt, what can I do for you? What else can we do? The pillar can even overturn a scalper, but it can't even overturn a big girl. Gaga gaga. A broken mouthed old woman next to her casually interjected, laughing recklessly. Ah. Several women nearby opened their mouths in surprise and looked at the village girl. Oh, I dare not speak recklessly. I'm afraid you may not know yet. The day before yesterday, Zhu and Li Hua had just arranged a marriage, the middle dot aged woman quickly turned the conversation back. This is not just me talking nonsense, it's the spring scene that Widow Lu and I witnessed with our own eyes in the Luhua beach. Looking at the familiar and familiar appearance of the pillars, I'm afraid it might not have happened once or twice. The old woman with a broken mouth was vivid and frothy, fearing that others might not know she had exclusive information. She didn't even see the middle dot aged woman's increasingly long black face. The crowd couldn't help but take a cold breath and said, this is too. That. Li Hua's mother knows, can she still agree to this marriage? The pretty village girl turned pale and shook her body like a sieve of bran. She suddenly looked up and gave a fierce glance at the young man in the distance. She covered her face and turned her head, then stumbled out of the crowd and ran away. Pear Blossom The middle dot aged woman couldn't help but feel angry and rushed up to tear and beat the broken mouthed old woman. You're a damn broken mouthed old lady, are you talking in human language? Ah! It's better to destroy ten pillars of incense than one family member. You're doing evil. If there's something wrong with the pear blossom, you'll have to pay with your life. Pear blossom, pear blossom. After speaking, she spat fiercely at the old woman and hurriedly separated from the crowd to chase her out. The broken-mouthed old woman snorted and spat at the back of the middle. Aged woman. I'm sorry. You're not the mother of the Pear Blossom Girl. What kind of business are you meddling in? I'm not lying, are you still telling the truth? If you don't believe me, ask Widow Lu. Hey, Auntie, you're being careless, don't talk about me. I haven't been to the Luhua Beach with you, and I haven't seen anything spicy. The voice of another woman immediately sounded next to her. This is a fair-skinned and beautiful woman who shouted discontentedly while picking up the hand of the girl next to her. 
Let's go, Jour, let's go home, she said as he was speaking, a lame old man squeezed out of the crowd and slapped the old woman, shouting, you talkative girl, have you made a mistake again? If you want to die, go die quickly and don't cause trouble for me. This slap made the old woman speechless. The world suddenly became quiet. The women next to them covered their mouths and couldn't help but laugh, dodging. Watching the pretty village girl leave, a few members of the armored team laughed and said half meat and half vegetarian words with a lewd expression. Oh, there's nothing to say about the face of Li Hua's figure. Do you think this pillar has committed evil? My brother, you don't know. Li Hua's mother is a notorious greedy mother worm. No matter how beautiful the pear flower is, there won't be three or twenty yuan from the ocean, three media, and six pings welcoming her to the door. Can Li Hua's mother let her ride? Oh, it seems that the pillar's marriage is going to be yellow. Yellow. Yellow is good. Your chance, brother, is here. Hurry up, find someone to visit Li Hua's house to explore her mother. Mouth. It's hard to say that someone will warm up the bed the night after tomorrow. Yes, as long as you have money, there won't be many women who are lively and agile. Ha ha ha. As he heard them talk more and more outrageously, Wang Jiagui extended his hand and interrupted them, turning to Xia Yuzheng. Rural people, who don't have a gatekeeper, like to say these nonsense, ha ha. Then he straightened his stomach, patted his gun on his waist, and asked. Special envoy, that's all for the hustle and bustle of this place. It's all rural style and not very I dot catching. So, young Master Chen may be able to chat with you, but now that we are receiving guests at home, it's not easy to disturb us. What should we do next? How to arrange it? Isn't it convenient for guests to follow the host? Hungry hearted Xia Yuzhen couldn't help but think to himself, my lord is gnawing on the fragrant chicken legs in his sleep. You, the security guard, brought a few broken guns and woke me up in a noisy manner. If I don't apologize for this, I'll have to deal with two meals of food and drink. Is it okay to let go? Glancing at Wang Jiagui and seeing his eyes staring at him like a wolf, Xia Yuzheng seems to be trying to catch up with his own change of expression. He is still doubting the identity of Lao Tzu, end of this chapter. Chapter 6 The Great God You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 6 The Great God Ma Dan This Republic of China is really not a place for people to mix and play. Even if one is not careful, there is always a risk of personal injury. Xia Yuzheng pretended to casually move his gaze away and accidentally scanned the skinny Niu Air. He found that Niu Air was facing away from the village women, smiling like two fools, with flames jumping in his eyes. The rope in his hand was still gently swaying. This little gaze, tsk tsk, it's like a dog seeing flesh and bones. Xia Yuzheng muttered to himself as he turned to look at Wang Jiagui, about to speak. Suddenly, a strange and sinister voice rang out from afar. Oh my, are you too brave to dig up my Lu family's land without my consent? When everyone heard the sound and looked, they saw seventeen or eighteen servants carrying long spears, surrounded by a wealthy young man in a silk shirt, rushing towards them in unison. Upon hearing these words, the younger generation above Zhen stopped their work and looked at each other. A few young men suddenly turned pale, and even the tools they were holding slipped involuntarily. They tilted their hoes and iron chisels around the edge of the ditch. Captain Liu, the supervisor's servant, saw the long handle of a hoe knocking towards him and quickly reached out to pick it up. He leaned on the wooden handle with both hands and smiled at the young man. Ah, Master Lu's cousin, you have wronged us by saying this. Who are we? If it weren't for Master Chen's agreement with you, we wouldn't dare to dig with just a hoe. Yeah, it's all agreed upon. Whoever's land will be used for this canal, and when the land opens on the Luhua beach, they will give it a double taste. Someone in the crowd spoke loudly, and Xia Yuzheng saw that it was Niu Er. He stood on tiptoe and said from a distance, the young master said, 
I only know how to make up for it more, not less. Discuss. There was a discussion. But I didn't agree. The wealthy young man said, pursing his lips, besides, don't mention anything to me about the young master. He is him, I am me. Our relationship as cousins has long been severed. The villagers looked at each other, and then an old voice laughed and said, Hee hee, Master Biao, you can't say that. This cousin is a close relative, and he can't even break bones. With the sound, an old man leaning on a cane separated from the crowd and walked out trembling. He came to the young man in the silk shirt, waved his hand, and slowly said. Master Biao, when your mother was a girl, I heard her say it many times. She said, as long as we can lead a canal, the chaotic rocky beach can become a high dot quality grain and rice river in an instant. But people's hearts are always different. This matter has been dragging on for many years in the blink of an eye. Sigh, your mother too. The old man was spirited, with white beard and hair, and only a few teeth left in his mouth. His speech was leaking, and his voice was buzzing with vitality. At this moment it was obvious that he remembered the past, and a hint of sadness emerged from the old folds on his face. He sighed and slowly said. Master Biao, you are a reasonable person. Everything is easy to discuss. I am old, but the younger generation still wants to listen to what I say. Here, I will make a decision on my own. Turn around. I will open up fields on the Luhua beach and give you two more acres of land. Do you think this is good? As he spoke, he closed his hands and lifted his cane, trembling and groping, ready to bow to the wealthy young Master Lu. Old man, you're so old now. Don't do this, I can't bear it. Master Lu waved his hand, stopped the old man, turned his body, and said he didn't accept his gift. This place is my mother's dowry field for dowry. Without my consent, no one can forcibly occupy it. You guys are still relying on me, right? He turned his head and shouted loudly, what are the few people from home still waiting to do? Give me a beating. Upon hearing this, the servants took off their guns and rushed up to the ditch, starting to drive away the young workers. Those younger students couldn't avoid it and were immediately thrown away by the servants with gun butts. Hey, Master Biao. The old man with white beard, feeling anxious, couldn't help but pull on Master Lu's sleeve and plead repeatedly. Young Master Lu impatiently pushed, and the old man with a white beard couldn't stand, taking a few steps back with a thud. Seeing him retreat to the side of the road, he was about to stabilize his figure. Unexpectedly, he stumbled over a stone and fell backwards with a loud bang. His crutch flew off and he fell into a ditch on the roadside. This fall was not light, even the grass shoes on his feet fell off, leaving two thin and dirty feet swaying in everyone's sight. You deserve it. Young Master Lu scolded coldly, Old man, I saw your longevity star hanging, thinking your life was too long. The villagers looked at each other in confusion. A few young people shouted and rushed out of the group to the edge of the ditch, all at once rescuing them. I saw the old man's eyes turn white, with a bruise and purple patch on his head and face. Blood seeped from the corners of his mouth, and his grey beard and chest were also stained with a lot of blood beads a few young people caressed their chests and pounded their backs, and the old man finally breathed a sigh. He opened his eyes, groaned, and reached out his dry and withered hand, trembling to pluck away his withered white beard. With a plop, he spat out a withered tooth. Those young people, probably the old man's nephews, glared angrily at young Master Lu. Young Master Lu's eyes widened and he scolded. What are you looking at? If you want to move my house, you'll have to trade your life for it. Speaking of which, he caught a glimpse from the corner of his eye that the servants had already worked together to block two or three young people. He turned to them and shouted fiercely, Damn it, you've torn your face anyway. Let me break their hands and feet. The few servants were ordered, so they pulled on the younger generation. The younger generation heard the sound and became very anxious, struggling desperately to escape. 
The villagers who were watching looked at each other with anger on their faces, but they dared not step forward. The brave and clever villager ran back to the village with his feet pulled out, wanting to report to the young master Chen Qinghua who was in charge of opening the canal. A few elderly people saw Wang Jiagui and the Baojia team present and quickly walked over, demanding that Wang Jiagui come out to take charge of the situation. The villagers are also full of gossip, saying everything they want, with a strong desire for Wang Jiagui and the Baojia team to take the lead. Xie Yuzhen watched coldly as he saw Niu Er and several team members eager to try, but was stopped by Wang Jiagui's stern gaze. Wang Jiagui felt regretful in his heart and thought to himself, why did he come to this canal to join the fun? Young Master Chen is going to open a canal, and I have paid for the money and labor that should be shared. That's enough. Now, in such a turbulent situation, everyone has to take the lead as the principal of the insurance company. If we put it aside in our daily lives, it would be a good opportunity to show off our prestige. But today's trend is not easy to make a name for. The Lu family and Shiko, who have been officials for three generations, have extraordinary power. I, Wang Jiagui, can't even flatter him in time. How could I take the initiative to offend him? Besides, this young master is singing this song today, and everyone present knows it well. To put it plainly, it wasn't Mr. Chen's mining in the mountains that caused trouble. Just because the Lu family learned about the news of opening a tungsten mine, they sent a young master to come forward and invest in the shares. I thought it was a safe bet that my cousin would hold a stake. I don't know what evil the young master of the Chen family has fallen into, and he doesn't want the Lu family to get involved in anything. The Lu family has lost so much face, so they must find the venue back. However, this young master of the Lu family's watch is not a good thing either. Since the death of his third aunt, he has been engaged in eating, drinking, prostitution, gambling, bullying men and women, and committing all kinds of evil deeds. I heard that they were all sued to the county in the old years. But so what? The county magistrate didn't beat him up and didn't dare to convict him of any crime. You say, this Yaman is not equivalent to being opened by the Lu family. Wang Jiagui has decided not to be this early bird. During Wang Baogui's contemplation, the villagers had everything they said. Some said that the Baojia team occupied the pit and didn't take a shit, while others said that the Baojia team only ate the village's food and salaries. Now it seems that it's better to keep a few pigs and dogs. Pigs can kill meat to eat, and dogs know how to bark a few times when outsiders bully them. At this moment, several young people on the top of the canal were outnumbered and finally caught by the servants of the Lu family, causing both sides to drag and push on the canal port. The villagers were in a great hurry, and Niu Er and several members of the Baojia team saw the situation, all of whom petitioned Wang Jiagui to come forward and save the people. As more and more villagers gathered around the Baojia team, everything was said. Wang Jiagui gradually couldn't resist it. However, the Lu family at Shiko couldn't afford to offend them. When Wang Jiagui wanted to be a shrunken turtle but couldn't, his gaze suddenly swept over Xia Yuzhen, and his heart suddenly became clear. Yes, this one in front of me is a special envoy from Nanjing, directly appointed by the chairman of the standing committee. This is an imperial envoy. As sung in the play, not to mention the local gentry in Liujia district, but also the county magistrate, prefect, and even the provincial governor, if they engage in illegal activities, they will be taken down or beheaded. Ah, uh, ha, huh, I'm really dizzy. I didn't invite a great deity in front of me, so I'm anxious in this empty space when everyone saw what they said, Wang Jiagui remained unmoved and was anxiously spinning around like ants on a hot pot. Suddenly, Wang Jiagui's eyes lit up and he stood up, coming to a young man dressed in a foreign style. He made a fat bow and said loudly, Mr. Special Envoy, opening a canal to divert water and irrigate the fields is a great thing for the benefit of the country and the people. But this was originally agreed upon, and now it has changed to a special envoy. You have been commissioned by the national government to come to the place for inspection and exploration. This is the Qing Dynasty, 
and you are the imperial envoy who was ordered by the emperor. How should we handle this matter now? Could you please give us a proposal? Wang Jiagui was just suspecting Xia Yuzheng's identity, and in the blink of an eye, his attitude completely changed. Now, even if Xia Yuzheng tells him that he is not a special envoy, he is also unwilling to listen. The villagers saw the young man in front of them with a foreign and extraordinary demeanor. At this moment, they were pleasantly surprised by Wang Jiagui's words and gathered around Xia Yuzheng, pleading for his help in upholding justice. Several elderly people with gray hair and beards, upon hearing that this was the ancient imperial envoy in front of them, burst into tears. They all bowed down and were about to bow down. In a panic, Xia Yuzheng quickly stepped forward and helped them one by one. But under the guidance of these elderly people, there are too many villagers who need to bow down. How can he help up this one and kneel down that one? In no time, it was like the wind blowing through the wheat waves, or like the stars arched over the moon, kneeling on the ground with ragged men, women, and children. Xia Yuzhen was dumbfounded. I'm a Shibei product. At this moment, there were several shouts coming from Jinto, but several young people struggled under the pressure of the Lu family servants. Two or three servants raised their gun butts and threw them on their bodies and legs. Air Wa. Oh, Master Biao, you can't do it. In front of Xia Yuzhen, there were cries of sadness in the crowd, and several women cried and got up, then turned around and stumbled over. Everyone, let's start with chapter reviews, book reviews, and recommendations. End of this chapter. Chapter 7. Justice. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 Justice Wang Jiagui was even more frightened in his heart. Suddenly, he caught a glimpse of a servant pointing and reporting something to Lu Deshang in the distance. Wang Jiagui couldn't help but provoke, knowing that he was standing straight at this moment, which was too I dot catching and inevitably fell into the eyes of the young master of the Lu family's cousin. If he were to be remembered by this demon king from now on, it would not be cost.effective. So he also knelt down with a thud, propping his hands on the ground and lowering his head. In the eyes of others, it was similar to being completely devoted, and many people were moved by his piety. A few elderly people looked at him with satisfaction. Although Wang Jiagui didn't do anything good on weekdays, he could still stand firm in this critical moment of right and wrong. Xia Yuzheng looked at the men, women, and children all over the ground, unable to help but feel dumbfounded. Should he be a special envoy or a prisoner? This multiple dot choice question is not easy to do, but the people of the Republic of China really need heroes. Xia Yuzheng was deeply moved for a moment. At this moment, among the crowd kneeling underground, many people angrily said. This young master is too bullying. He wants to invest in a mine, so he can talk to the young master well about the opening of the canal. He suddenly changed his mind and now he wants to interrupt people's hands and feet. He doesn't even care about this trivial matter. What kind of relative? What kind of affection? Where do you think he is a kind-hearted offspring? Eating, drinking, gambling, drug trafficking, bullying men and women. What kind of thing is he not proficient in? The name Lu Dezong has spread far and wide. Isn't that right? His Lu family has great wealth and fortune. I heard that even the county magistrate was Lu's former student. Sai, how can we handle this? This auspicious day of the Yellow River was chosen by the blind man Chen from Tonghu Weir. Now it seems that that half of the ocean has been soaked in soup. Ah, not only that half of the ocean, but also the idea of opening a canal and farmland has been talked about for many years. Just because everyone's hearts are not aligned, they have been dragging on there. Now it's so easy for our village to have an international student who has gathered people's hearts together. With all their strength, we will open the canal. But if we don't succeed this time, we may have to endure until the end of the year. The voices of the underground crowd grew lower and lower, gradually becoming silent. After a while, the ragged crowd lifted their heads and eagerly looked at Xia Yuzhen, who was towering above them. 
In that gaze, there was sadness, helplessness, hope, and longing. In the pleading eyes of several elderly men with white hair and beard, there was also a hint of sadness. The people of this Republic of China need heroes so much. The times call for heroes, but can I afford it? Xia Yuzhen couldn't help but ask himself. His gaze was burning, falling on the young players in the crowd in the armor, and he remained silent for a long time. It wasn't until everyone felt strange that he spoke slowly and coldly. Dear fellow villagers, I have been ordered by the chairman of the Nanjing Standing Committee to inspect the area and punish those who jump illegally. However, the young master of the Lu family is currently maintaining the dowry field left for him by his mother. The underground crowd became increasingly uncomfortable as they listened, and Niu Er and the team members of Baojia thought to themselves, shouldn't even the special envoy from Nanjing be wary of the Lu family at Shiko? Steadily lifting his head, the young man in front of the meeting had a displeased expression on his face, and there was no expression on his face. Looking at the security guard Wang Jiagui, he still lowered his head, like a shrunken turtle. At this moment, the standing special envoy continued to say. When you open a water canal, you need to pass through his family's field. Naturally, you need his nod of consent before you can start construction. In this regard, it is reasonable. Even if this field used to belong to our village, now that it is given to someone else, it is their own and there is no reason to reclaim it. This is called the spirit of contract. After Xia Yuzheng finished speaking, everyone kneeling underground looked at each other, and Wang Jiagui was completely dumbfounded. Out of self-protection, he led the whole village to send people to the altar, but to his surprise, he had worshipped the wrong deity. For a moment, he didn't know whether to continue kneeling or to get up immediately. Normally, he should have led the villagers to get up immediately, but what should he do after getting up? The anger of the villagers will soon concentrate on themselves. Just as he was in a dilemma, the towering Xia Yuzheng spoke again. That's right, adhering to the spirit of the contract is a valuable quality that deserves praise. But because of the spirit of the contract, this canal cannot be opened, and thousands of acres of land on the riverbank can only be abandoned for public and private purposes, which is biased. However, because of one person's personal interests, the public of a thousand people is abolished, which... As he spoke, Xia Yuzheng extended a finger and pointed to the sky, intensifying his tone as if asking the villagers or asking the heavens, where is justice? Where is justice? The underground crowd was stopped by Xia Yuzheng and said, Yes, it's right to abide by the contract, this is also the right way to open channels and fields. What should we do if this pair meets the right one without giving way to each other? Now, as soon as young Master Lu comes up, he can cut off people's hands and feet and use reason to commit violence and harm others. Is there any natural law in this world? Nyo Er and a few clever young people immediately thought of Xia Yuzheng's identity. As our village chief has said, this special envoy is the imperial envoy of ancient times. No matter how powerful the Lu family is in Shiko, they can still surpass heaven. Thinking of this, their eyes began to sparkle, and indeed, the towering deity in front of them spoke again. My fellow villagers, I have been entrusted by the nationalist government in Nanjing to inspect the places and uphold justice for the people. Today, when young Master Lu injured someone, I will definitely take care of it. But as the saying goes, flies do not bite seamless eggs. I see that there are also things that are not right in our village today. What is wrong in this village? Can you tell me whether I should take care of it or not? Can I take care of it? This. The underground crowd began to look dumbfounded again. After all, it was only a few elderly people who had experienced many hardships for most of their lives and were so experienced. Upon hearing this, they exclaimed in their hearts. In this world, things cannot be separated from the word reason. The special envoy is truly a high dot ranking official from Nanjing. Despite being young, he immediately realized the crux of the problem. Today, the root cause of this matter is actually in Mr. Chen's mind. 
The Lu family in Shiko town wants to invest in the mine. If young Master Chen doesn't agree for a day, then this canal will definitely not open for a day. Well, the Lu family has a great financial situation and is not easy to deal with. Do you mean that Mr. Chen in our village has made concessions? Hey, young master, as long as we can turn this canal into one, the most affordable option is still in our village. You have suffered for the villagers this time, and everyone will come up with a way to make up for it. The only thing that won't make you lose is that you see those young people about to be killed by Lu Dekong. What's wrong with this special envoy? Why don't you quickly say something, save someone first? A few elderly people with graying beards and eyebrows, thinking about this, all understood very well in their hearts. They muttered to themselves, it seems that even the imperial envoy from this government is afraid of that Lu bug. Everyone's thoughts were overflowing with words, and Xia Yuzheng's face was fiery, but his heart was a bit angry. You dare not resist yourself, but hope that the young master will become this savior. But, young master, I'm just a western-style foodie. Is it foolish to be a young master to send meat on the chopping board? Still foolish. Still foolish. At this point, the other villagers kneeling on the ground also vaguely understood. Everyone, look at me, I look at you. Seeing the other person silent, they gradually lowered their heads. Xia Yuzheng observed everyone's performance one by one, and his already restless heart became even more suppressed. What would the heroes who stepped forward in times of crisis do in the face of such a situation? Various thoughts swept through his mind like a tide, and Xia Yuzheng couldn't help but take a deep breath. With his heart wide open, he suddenly laughed and said, My fellow villagers, to be honest with everyone, our special envoy entered Jiangxi three months ago. Along the way, we have removed some 20.30 black hats, big and small. Even the powerful and powerful clans in the local area have been uprooted, not to mention seven or eight families. After a pause, Xia Yuzheng said again, Today, I want to see how big his Lu family's wealth is. Is it even greater than the influence of the Nanjing government? It's so big that even this country can't accommodate him anymore. As soon as this conversation fell, people on the ground lifted their heads, their eyes filled with hope. Xia Yuzheng's eyes were bright as he scanned the crowd on the ground. Finally, he locked onto Niu Air and the bodyguards and said loudly, Now, I announce the establishment of the Qin Luo village protection team based on the original Baojia team, dedicated to defending the water channel and dealing with troublemakers. Those who participate are required to dare to fight and charge. One troublemaker will be arrested and divided into four acres of land, and two troublemakers will be arrested and divided into ten acres of land. These fields will be distributed to everyone immediately after the successful diversion of water and land development. The more troublemakers caught, the more fields will be distributed, and the better the location. There is no limit to the number of people in our village who can sign up for the tunnel protection team. Anyone aged 16 or above and 55 or below can sign up. Those from the Baojia team will get up now and queue up here. Those who have just signed up for the tunnel protection team will all queue up here. As soon as Xia Jing finished speaking, the cries of women could be heard from a distant ditch head. You damn people! You might as well die, woo woo. Oh my goodness, what have I done? Second child. On the ground in front of them, several young students were hugging their legs and feet, screaming and rolling on the ground, seeing that their legs and feet were not safe. A few women rushed up to the ditch, some went to rescue their loved ones, some were more aggressive, and directly started to fight with a few Lu mansion servants. The several servants in the Jinbu area acted very harshly, only to see them three times, five times, and two times, and then they knocked down those women to the ground. Some family members were beating people and obscenely reaching out to young women. In the blink of an eye, those women were swaying, disheveled, and disheveled. A young woman saw something was wrong and quickly turned around to run away. The two servants at Jinto saw that the woman had a beautiful appearance and looked at each other. 
They gave a knowing smile and chased after her with a strange smile. Sister-in-law, sister dot in dot law of the Lu family. At this moment, in the crowd kneeling in front of Xia Yuzhen, someone suddenly cried out in sorrow. End of this chapter. Chapter 8. Ring Xian. You are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 8 Ring Xian When everyone heard the sound, they saw two people standing up in the dark crowd, one behind the other. One male and one female. The man is a skinny Nyo heir, and the woman is a beautiful village girl named Li Hua. Seeing this situation, many people in the crowd thought to themselves. This Nyo heir, who has nothing to do with anything, always likes to sneak into Widow Lu's house, causing a lot of gossip. To put aside his usual behavior today, he is bound to be looked down upon by others and even scolded by village elders. But in front of him, if he dared to step forward, he could be considered a man. However, this mountain cargo weighs only a few tails in total, with a skeleton resembling a paper lantern. Can it withstand the three punches and two kicks of Lu Dajong and the others when rushed over? People's gaze involuntarily fell on the handsome hibiscus of the pear blossom, who still had her usual timid appearance. At this moment, out of righteous indignation, she stepped forward, adding a touch of heroism to her graceful figure. At this moment, she had an angry expression on her face, turned her head and stared straight at the person kneeling at her feet. Everyone knows without looking that the young person kneeling next to her is the famous stick pillar in the village. Li Huo waited for a moment, only to see that the pillar had not moved for a long time, but had lowered its head even lower. She was so angry that her eyebrows stood on end, stomped her feet hard, and twisted out of the crowd. Outside the crowd, the skinny Nyo heir was also trembling all the time. When she walked out quickly, his pale face showed some human color. Li Hua did not look at him, but just shook the two fried dough twists braids hanging on his chest behind his neck, glared at him, and scolded. What are you waiting for? Let's go. With a pale face, Nyo Air nodded heavily, shook the rope in his hand, and took the lead in running. Two figures, one as thin as a stick and the other as slender and delicate, quickly ran past the kneeling villagers. One Jiegui's gaze followed the distance and saw the fierce and vicious Lu family on the top of the ditch, still knocking down women like hungry tigers. His gaze trembled for a moment, and he lowered his head, afraid to look again. At this moment, a shout of, Stop, you two, stop, echoed above his head perhaps, Nyo Air er was well aware of the power balance between the two sides. As soon as he took two steps, he stopped and turned around, eagerly shouting to Xia Yuzhen, Special, special envoy, hurry up and save someone. Seeing the women being bullied from afar, Xia Yuzhen felt even more anxious. Seeing that Nyo Air er and Li Hua dared to step forward, he quickly shouted, Okay. You two, what are your names? Would you like to join the canal protection team? Answer me loudly. Special envoy, my name is Nyo Air. Er. My name is Li Hua. Nyo Air er repeatedly turned his head to look in the direction of Zhen Tu and called out in a mournful voice, Help, save people, special. Before he could finish his sentence, Xia Yuzheng interrupted him and said, Okay. Brother Nyo, Miss Pear Blossom, we have accepted you from our canal protection team. You two are the first to sign up. In recognition of you, I announce that an additional five acres of land will be awarded to you. Upon hearing these words, the crowd on the ground hummed and all stood up straight, discussing extensively. My fellow villagers, this team guarding the canal doesn't recruit wine bags and rice bags. The most important thing is to dare to fight, that is to say, courage comes first. Without courage, even if you can overturn a bull's eye, then I don't want it. Despite the urgency of the situation, the underground crowd still burst into laughter as people looked at the stuffy pillar. This pillar is naturally powerful and timid like a mouse. At this moment, in front of everyone, with laughter and laughter, the pillar's face turned red and he quickly lowered his body, trying to hide behind the crowd. The majestic posture of this pillar lifting the stone just now has long fallen into Xia Yuzheng's eyes. At this moment of employment, Xia Yuzheng, 
such a powerful man, would not let go. Without hesitation, he waved his hand generously. Miss Pear Blossom has already stood up, why don't you come over quickly? The pillar stood up hesitantly without saying a word, only nodding heavily with a red face. Then, like a big girl, he secretly glanced at Pear Blossom and lowered his head. At this moment, the situation above Zhen's head became even more chaotic. Xie Yuzhen was restless and almost cursed, but he was afraid of scaring him. At present, there is no one available, one can catch one. I had to pretend to wave at him calmly, and when Yen said. Come here, stand with Miss Pear Blossom, let's go over and save people together. Nyo Air, er, Pear Blossom, you three, stand for me first. Without my command, no one is allowed to come forward. The pillar glanced at the Pear Blossom again before moving its steps and walking towards it with a shy and pinched expression. Xie Yuzhen, who was extremely anxious, couldn't bear to see his appearance. He suppressed the urge to hit someone and turned to the crowd in front of him, his gaze firmly locking onto the young men in the crowd. What are you waiting for? You, you, and you, get up now. Some young men, unable to resist pressure, finally stood up hesitantly and awkwardly. A few members of the Baojia team looked at me, I looked at you, and in the end, they all looked at Wang Jiagui kneeling in front of Xia Yuzhen. Wang Jiagui saw Xia Yuzhen repeatedly beating and cutting, but there were about ten people who responded. He thought to himself that this special envoy was a good means. He didn't spend a single grain or salary, so he pulled up the fighting team. However, is this special envoy in front of me unarmed, and with these honest young people, capable of withstanding the live ammunition of the Lu family's young master? Thinking of this, his head sank even lower. Wang Bao Chang. At this moment, a sharp shout suddenly sounded in his ear, deafening. Wang Jiagui was startled and let out a loud cry. He looked up and saw the deity, who was towering and looked down on all beings. He changed his previous friendly expression and suddenly became angry and majestic. He gave a stern expression on his back and quickly pleaded softly. Ah, special envoy, don't shout, don't shout at me. Although I, Wang Jiagui, have been labeled as a security guard, in front of the Lu family, I am just an ant, not even a fart. I, I'm afraid. Afraid. Xia Yuzhen couldn't help feeling anxious as he saw the two families above the canal getting closer and closer to the young woman. Looking back, I saw Wang Jiagui cowering in front of me, feeling even more disgusted. The country has appointed you as the security guard, and the villagers have provided for your security guard team. This is to ensure that you protect the environment and the people, not to make you afraid at critical moments. Since your abilities are limited and you are not capable of serving as the security guard, then hand over your gun and abdicate to give up your position. Ah! Are these officials from the Nanjing government so domineering and unreasonable? At this moment, Wang Jiagui had a deep belief in Xia Yuzheng's identity. He looked up at the deity he had personally worshipped, completely bewildered. He was extremely resentful in his heart. Humph! Although you are a special envoy, you have just been bandit and the phoenix that was taken down is not as good as a chicken. If it weren't for encountering the head of this insurance company, could you call for wind and rain like this? What a white-eyed wolf! After a while, seeing Xia Yuzheng arrogantly looking down at his waist, he suddenly realized and instinctively covered the exquisite handgun at his waist. Bring it! Xia Yuzheng stopped covering up and pointed directly at the handkerchief around Wang Jiagui's waist. How could Wang Jiagui be willing to submit, but dare not openly refuse? A moment of hesitation, he wanted to say that he was the position of the security guard, but it took him two acres of land to get it. The special envoy couldn't just withdraw, but in front of everyone in this place, where can he say that? He also wanted to say that this short gun was purchased by him for $10 from a retired official, and it was his personal gun. The special envoy had no authority to confiscate it. What Wang Jiagui is thinking, Xia Yuzheng has no time to think too much. He finally realized how much his motivational ability was. 
he finally realized that in a short period of time, it was impossible for him to turn the flock of sheep in front of him into lions. Yes, not everyone can give a shout and just respond like a cloud. He decided to do something within his ability. So, without waiting for Wang Jiagui to speak again, he quickly rushed forward and without hesitation, kicked him in the face. Seeing the arrogant special envoy kick and kick, Wang Jiagui was surprised and couldn't help but be surprised. Fortunately, the speed of the kick was not fast enough, so he had time to dodge. Unexpectedly, the special envoy didn't mean it. Seeing him release his hand covering his waist, the special envoy kicked towards his waist. Wang Jiagui was shocked and lost his color. He quickly reached out to protect him, but the broomstick had already left his belt and flew away. With a successful strike, Xia Yuzhen reached out and copied over. Wang Jiagui has always been accustomed to being domineering. He had to put aside his usual routine and would have thrown the table open early. However, today, for some reason, when facing the domineering Xia Yuzhen, he held back his anger, making his old face turn black. At this moment, he actually stood up slightly, hunched his hands, and a few smiles squeezed out on his meaty face, even more unsightly than crying. He kowtowed to the towering Xia Yuzhen and said. Special Envoy Mingjian, in this village, the village chief and the Baojia team are not firing guns. When the Baojia team was formed, there were no weapons, so I had to spend 10 yuan in exchange for this gun. The few firearms of the Baojia team were also built by me and Mr. Chen with money. Wang Jiagui saw that the position of the security guard was probably not guaranteed, so he wanted to take a back seat and try to save this short spear. Time is running out, and in order to boost morale, Xia Yuzheng is trying to imitate and imitate the cowboy costume in western films, swinging the rough-shaped handgun with a gust of wind. However, this handgun is nearly two feet long, weighs about five or six pounds, and is very heavy. He has not touched the gun for a long time, so how can he swing it very smoothly? At this moment, upon hearing these words, he quickly stopped and stared sternly at Wang Jiagui, shouting. Wang Jiagui, as the head of the village's security guard and the captain of the armor team, you are a fish and meat village in your spare time. In times of emergency, you cannot resist foreign aggression. What crime should you think of it? Xia Yuzheng shook his hand gun, and the gun mouth intentionally or unintentionally pointed at him. Seeing the sinister intent in Xia Yuzheng's eyes, Wang Jiagui was suddenly shocked. This imperial envoy on patrol is really like the same as what is sung in a play. No matter how big or small you are in an official position, no matter who you are, if you say you are dismissed, you will be dismissed, if you say you are beheaded, you will be beheaded, but I, pitifully, although I usually extort and catch young men, and take advantage of the lack of people to wipe off the oil of the young lady in daughter. In law, I haven't done anything too outrageous either. Is it because of the mute incident with the village owner? But I also gave two pieces of ocean afterwards. She loves to jump off cliffs, what's it to me? That's two oceans. You know, even if you put it on Tanghu Weir, you don't need this price code. Is this special envoy going to use me as a warning just because I refuse to make such a fuss today? Oh my god, this is just a matter of hasty human life. In this world, is there still a natural law? Wang Jiagui felt extremely anxious and couldn't help but look left and right for help. Everyone around him avoided his gaze, and even the team members who were usually submissive to him, lowered their heads and studied the pure plant fiber shoes on their feet with great care. Wang Jiagui was in a panic, but Xia Yuzheng ignored him and turned his face away. Xia Yuzheng glanced at the more than ten young people following him, and saw that although they stepped forward under the pressure of the situation, they were each like eggplants beaten in frost, with their heads and brains in sharp contrast to the group of ferocious and evil spirits who were committing the crime. Even though he was usually determined and angry at the moment, his heart suddenly became disheveled. The sun is shining brightly. The sky tiles in midsummer are blue and fluffy, like the cotton candy I loved when I was a child. There were hundreds of people surrounded by darkness. 
Xie Yuzhen felt that he had never been so lonely in his life as he is today. But in an instant, he took control of his emotions, and the disappointment that had just appeared on his face disappeared instantly. I saw him burst out laughing and bowing to the ground, all men, women, and children, with both hands falsely pleading, fellow villagers, get up together. Let's find that young Master Biao to reason with. The villagers have been kneeling for a long time, their legs and feet have long been numb. At this moment, if granted amnesty, they have all climbed up. At that moment, Xia Yuzheng's eyes were out of sight, and the two servants in Shenzhen soon overtook the widow Lu. One of them reached out and grabbed her fried dough twists braid, and with a forceful tug, she fell down to the ditch. The widow Lu had a beautiful appearance and fair skin. She fell heavily, but she quickly got up and was about to run in this direction with her legs crossed. But her braid was still being held by the servant, and with a strong pull from the servant, she involuntarily retreated back. The two servants took advantage of the situation and hugged each other, giggling and using their hands. Widow Lu screamed and struggled desperately, but her hands were unbeatable with her four claws. Soon, she was caught off guard and her clothes were torn apart, with a few buttons on the collar falling off. She quickly gave up the fight with the enemy and desperately protected herself. The two servants were even more excited, disregarding the struggle and shouting of Widow Lu, as they intensified their tearing and sarcastically commented. Lu, Lu's sister. In. Law, Nyo Air saw the situation and shouted wildly like a blazing cannon, shooting over. Xia Yuzhen quickly glanced at the sheep following him, feeling that the chances of winning were not high. However, at this moment, he didn't have to worry too much and waved his hand. If it's a man, just follow me. If you catch one who causes trouble, you'll be rewarded with four acres of land. If you catch two, you'll be rewarded with ten acres. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Big Insects You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 10 Hats You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Hats At this moment, Lu Daezong's eyes fluttered and his movements involuntarily slowed down, only to see the foreign student across from him suddenly lift a wooden black poke. Bang! With a loud bang, a crimson flame burst out from the black poke in front of me, and a white smoke rose up. To intimidate the entire audience. The crimson flame of the gun flickered in Lu Dajong's eyes, and the lead bullet lifted the top hat off his head, causing his head to buzz with a loud bang. Everyone was dumbfounded. I saw the white smoke expanding and spreading in the sunlight, quickly covering the heads and faces of the two people who were facing each other. The forehead was burning and painful, and the white smoke in front of me lingered for a long time. The thick smoke stimulated people to cry and cough incessantly. Lu Dajong's face suddenly turned pale and pale, and his oily forehead was instantly covered with tiny beads of sweat. This shot is too close. The bullets, combined with fireworks, covered his dense hair and burned open a trajectory two or three fingers wide. On both sides of the trajectory, there were still thick strands of hair, but they had begun to shrink and curl up, like withered grass in winter, emitting unpleasant burnt smells. After a while, the smoke of gunpowder faded a lot. Lu Daezong regained his composure, wiped his nose and tears, opened his swollen eyes, and the foreign student in front of him also had red eyes and seemed foolish. He was staring at the short gun in his hand, lost in thought, and muttered to himself, is this gun too addictive? There were still a few strands of gunpowder rising from the mouth of the short gun. And I, you want to kill me, big bug. Lu Daezong's anger suddenly rose from his heart, and he was about to move. However, he found that his throat seemed to be hoarse, unable to make any sound, and his strength seemed to be drained, unable to move. At this moment, the foreign student on the other side had handed the short gun in his hand to the nearby Baojia team member, and at the same time, he took a long gun. He weighed it with both hands, and in a flash, the cold iron gun barrel hit Lu Daekong's sweaty forehead. Nima, 
A sudden urge to urinate arose from his crotch, and Lu Dajong trembled even more violently. However, he still struggled to hold on, his lips trembling uncontrollably. If you have it, if you have it, just open it in front of your head and shoot. Young master, if I frown, I won't call you a hero. I saw the foreign student holding the gun with a turn of his eye, a sudden furrow in his eyebrows, his eyes as cold as a cold star, his voice icy, and he said with a stern tone. Lu Dajong, are you afraid you don't know the recently issued Jiangxi Anti-Bandit Regulations by the Nationalist Government? Anti-Bandit Regulations Lu Daikong's heart sank, wondering why the foreign student in front of him had started to speak in an official tone. Isn't this about opening a canal? Why is it related to suppressing bandits? He began to feel that the situation was not right, what was going on? The iron gun barrel pressed against the forehead was cold and cold. Lu Dajong didn't even like this kind of earthen gun on weekdays, and he didn't even allow his servants to assemble it. But he also knew that this soil was soil, which the mountain people used for hunting and often cut off the bones of wild boars. If it hit a person's forehead, it would naturally leave a hole. Anti-Bandit Regulations He felt the urge to urinate in his crotch becoming increasingly apparent, and he reminded himself not to embarrass himself here. But the more he wants to control himself, the more obvious the feeling of wanting to pee becomes. If there's a place to relax and then come back to bully. But he also knew that the guy in front of him couldn't have given him such a chance. So, he had to grit his teeth and endure it, his fat on his face twitching uncontrollably. What do you say this is for? What are you doing? Young Master Biao, you have also seen the world before. This is a special envoy from the Nanjing Nationalist Government, directly appointed by the Standing Committee Chairman. If you come down to inspect banditry, you will be labeled as an accomplice. Don't be too easy, uh. -huh. Without waiting for Xia Yuzhing to speak, Niu Er next to him jumped out, laughing and teasing, and said, The special envoy has come all the way, I don't know how many corrupt officials have been knocked down, how many hats wearing black gauze have been removed. Young Master Biao, please do it well. Otherwise, it would be very common to uproot your Lu family at the mouth of the stream. I'm afraid it won't take much effort from the special envoy than pulling out a single onion. Appointed to the Standing Committee Chairman. Special or Special Envoy. Didn't Wang Jiagui say that this is the classmate of the chubby guy? How did you become a Special Envoy? Lu Daizong was completely bewildered, and in the corner of his eye, Wang Jiagui beside him seemed to dare not face the foreign student directly. He could only see his gaze dodge and his body shrink, clearly showing extreme fear towards the foreign student. He was struggling to figure out the relationship when the foreign student in front of him spoke again. Lu Daikong, according to Chapter N, Article At, Item of the National Rural Farmland Water Conservancy Law, for the construction of farmland irrigation projects in rural areas, the landowner must cooperate and enjoy corresponding land compensation or financial compensation. Now Qing Luo Village has decided to provide double compensation for all the land used for the canal, but you are still not satisfied. Lu Dajong, you are so greedy, I believe there must be some reliance in the future, saying, who instructed you. In fact, Xia Yuzhen was just a half-hearted fan of the Republic of China. He had no idea whether the Nanjing government had promulgated any laws or regulations on rural water conservancy at that time. His words were just something he casually came up with to deal with the current situation. After speaking, he felt that the deterrent power was still not enough. Just as Niu Er's words reminded him, he gave a cold smile and said. As the saying goes, before the army moves, food and grass come first. I was instructed by the chairman of the standing committee to come down to inspect agriculture to ensure that during the period of suppressing bandits, the grain collection happened to collide with your Lu Dachong's attack, forcibly obstructing the construction of irrigation channels and indirectly affecting your behavior in grain collection. This has objectively constituted a fact that is beneficial to the bandits. Xia Zheng paused for a moment, pondered for a moment, 
strengthened his tone, and said, well, according to chapter hashtag, article, item asterisk, item N of the Jiangxi anti-bandit regulations, this special envoy now announces that you will be arrested and escorted to Nanchang camp on a certain day. There, the military commission will investigate and interrogate the details of your accomplice. Where are you, tie him up? Xia Yuzhen vaguely remembers that the nationalist government in Nanjing issued a similar anti-bandit regulations, but in which year was it promulgated and what is the specific content? How could he know? Now, it is the 24th year of the Republic of China, and there is a military commission investigation and statistics bureau, but it has little to do with the later Central Military Statistics Bureau. However, this is irrelevant and does not affect his continued fabrication. Because he knew that these ignorant country bumpkins in front of him must be even more ignorant than him. Moreover, people in this era will have a greater natural fear of the government. Sure enough, after he finished speaking, Lu Dajong's face suddenly changed when he heard the name, Military Commission Investigation and Statistics Bureau. His chubby and white face twitched and he began to beg for mercy with a stuttering sound. Wait, wait. Special Envoy, I'm just having a little grudge with my cousin Chin Qinghua. This is not a small family of bandits, and there are also people working in the county. So, I also know that the government's crackdown on bandits is crucial. Special Envoy knows that this is a personal grudge, not a bandit, and I dare not make mistakes. Only now do we realize the importance of joints. The thug in front of him was arrogant and respectful, and Xia Yuzheng felt a wave of pleasure in his heart. He felt that he was getting more and more involved in the scene. With his identity as a special envoy, he had a strong sense of authority, and as soon as he was in charge, he took orders. Well, if only it were really good with a cold glance, the servants a few steps away all changed their faces and Zhang Huang was at a loss. One Jiegui hunched down and dodged, abandoning public office for personal reasons, undermining the plan to suppress bandits, and committing the same crime as colluding with bandits. Xia Yuzheng's eyes were bright and he snorted from his nose, it's too late to plead now. The crime of committing the crime is even worse. If you have anything to say, go to Nanchang to camp. Under the urging of the pear blossoms, Nyo Er and Zhu Zhu, one of them pulled out the rope, while the other blushed and pretended to pounce. Behind them came the chaotic sound of footsteps. They were the docile, sheep army in Qing Luo village, who had finally arrived after the arduous turtle speed march. The heat was almost over, and Xia Yuzheng shook his head in satisfaction and shouted loudly. Someone, tie up all these lawless guys, take them to the village temple, and take care of them. A loose army of sheep flooded over like a tide, as usual when watching the excitement, surrounding the target three layers inside and three layers outside, forming a less tight circle. However, such a formation, in the eyes of Lu Deshang and his group of frightened birds today, is a manifestation of unity and a feeling of astonishing pressure. For a moment, no one dared to act rashly. The performance of the Qin Luo villagers is still unsatisfactory. As you watch one by one, only Nyo Er and Zhu Zhu, along with several armored teams, surrounded and began to tie Lu Dekong up. Lu Dezong saw the wrong way and wanted to struggle and resist. At this moment, the young official across from him sneered and pressed the cold gun barrel against his forehead, suddenly increasing the force of the thrust. Lu Dezong has never suffered such treatment before. He is accustomed to it and instinctively glares angrily, forcing his gaze towards the past. However, his gaze had long been divided by the gun barrel, and the images captured by his two eyes could not be fully assembled. In the corner of my eye, in a daze, I could only see the brass spring at the handle of the gun rising high, shining dazzling golden light in the sunlight. At that moment, a faint creaking sound echoed through the barrel of the gun and fell into my ears, heart-wrenching. Lu Dezong's heart trembled for a moment, and his gaze instinctively moved down according to the sound. He immediately saw the fingers inside the trigger ring, which had already begun to hook back. Nima, this foreign student really wants to kill someone. In that moment, all the courage and reliance of Lu Dajong disappeared with a whoosh, 
completely and completely, and he dared not move again. Even when Yo Air and others put ropes on him, as well as a burst of heat in his own pants, he seemed completely unaware. Oh, why is this person's pants leaking? Everyone, look where you are. Suddenly, a childish voice rang out from the crowd of onlookers. This is a child. Halfway through the child's words, their parents immediately covered their mouths and turned around to enter the crowd. The crowd was shocked at the sound, and then they couldn't help but burst into laughter. The servants from Lou Mansion, even though they were all live ammunition, were all dumbfounded at the sight. Xia Yuzheng reiterated loudly that opening canals and farmland is a great thing that benefits the country and the people. Whoever dares to cause trouble is against the country. Whoever catches a troublemaker will be rewarded with five acres of land. The crowd roared loudly, and the atmosphere finally became lively. The villagers gradually stood up, pushing, shoving, and beating the servants of Lu Mansion. The Lu family has several skilled servants who are unwilling to give in to capture and try to struggle. But at this time, in the eyes of the village people, their goals are not only objects of anger, but also fields that can be realized. There are many monks and few porridge. The sheep army is finally unwilling to let go of this opportunity to become rich, like a bunch of fresh grass, scrambling to eat. In the twinkling of an eye, Lu Dachong and his entourage servants became meat Zongzi one by one on May 5th. They were all tied up in various ways. The families of several young people who were previously interrupted by Lu Dashang and others, as well as the women who were beaten and humiliated as a result, quickly gathered around. The women cursed and spat, while those who were bolder began to tug, tear, and beat. The men also gathered around, and Lu Dezong widened his eyes, staring at everyone while struggling and cursing non-stop. The men suddenly became timid again when they saw the situation. Xia Yuzhen looked both angry and amused, shook his head inside. He walked over and pulled the rope from Lu Dashang's body, lifting him upside down and hitting him heavily on the dirt road, causing his forehead to turn black and his eyes to twinkle, almost fainting. Special, special envoy, please spare me. I dare not dare again. At this moment, the sun had already risen high and the sun was shining brightly in my eyes. This notorious giant insect, which was surrounded by dozens of miles, was still instinctively struggling under the shackles of various flowers. In a daze, he caught a glimpse that Xia Yuzheng had completely lost his sanity, appearing as if he was insane, reckless, and reckless, causing his liver to tremble in fear and eagerly plead for mercy. Xia Yuzheng rubbed the soil from the toe of his shoe against his silk shirt one by one, heartlessly laughing and pointing at him with a hateful expression. If you persist until the end, I still respect you as a man, and maybe I will let you go. Who would have thought you were also inconsistent? This kind of product is not the right version, and it has greatly disappointed my expectations. How could I spare you lightly? Upon hearing this, Lu Dekong was greatly surprised and thought to himself, you're pulling your braids, tying your hat, and hitting a stick. After hitting, you still need to pack a bag. Xia Yuzhen didn't care about what Lu Dekong was thinking, but he suddenly lifted his foot and kicked towards Lu Dekong's face, causing him to scream in agony. On the oily bridge of the nose, blood suddenly burst out and bloomed brightly under the sunlight, enjoying the fragrance of solitude and being particularly enchanting. In the blink of an eye, two bright red earthworms wriggled out of his nostrils. Lu Dezong, with a disheveled face and swollen eyes like peaches, felt both pain and annoyance, almost losing his breath. The young people in the village, seeing this, also had the courage to try to take action. At the beginning, they still couldn't help but humbly give in. You slapped him and he secretly punched him. But in no time, they finally couldn't hold back and their movements quickly became rough. Under the blue sky and white clouds, the sunny entrance of Qin Luo village suddenly changed their art style. Lu Dekong and his team were frequently hit hard, and soon their heads and faces swelled, their mouths turned black, like pig heads. Among them were those with internal chest and abdomen injuries, disfigured faces, 
and broken hands and feet from being beaten. These inhumane guys, when they were just bullying villagers, were all powerful and could not endure for a lifetime. In the blink of an eye, when they became the objects of being slaughtered and humiliated by others, they were filled with grief and unbearable pain. They began to repent devoutly, and they began to cling to the villagers, shedding tears and repeatedly pleading for mercy. Where can the villagers listen? Since ancient times, these sheep armies have been constantly trampling and bullying me when you have the upper hand. Don't blame me for beating you to tears when I have the upper hand. For a moment, the scene was on the verge of losing control, with demons dancing and ghosts crying and wolves howling. Causing Xia Yuzhing to quickly organize manpower, persuading and pulling, and putting in a lot of effort to maintain order, at least not causing any casualties. The villagers, who had already been fast-legged, didn't wait for the instructions of the special envoy to bring bamboo poles nearby. The crowd lifted the blood-stained and wronged prisoners and rushed towards the village with joy. Nyo Er, Li Hua Zhu, and three others helped Widow Lu, holding her injured brother in the arm, sandwiched in the crowd, and walked towards the village. The seven or eight young people in the village who had broken hands and feet, with the help of their relatives and villagers, either helped or hugged, or carried or lifted, although their appearance was miserable, they couldn't help but grin and moan, but they couldn't conceal their inner laughter, and everyone was puffing up and raising their eyebrows. Not long after, we arrived at the Chen family ancestral hall. After imprisoning the prisoners, Xia Yuzhen arranged for someone to call for a doctor to treat the injured offspring. Then, he was busy taking credit for everyone. In these years, the literacy rate is extremely low, and almost no one among these villagers can read. Therefore, Xia Yuzhen had to personally handle these affairs and take care of them. The newly appointed captain of the canal protection team, Nyo Urge, who is currently busy in standing guard at the entrance, reports to Feizu. Young Master Chin Qinghua, an international student, seeks to see you. End of this chapter